If Murray had supported the show, I'd be less sick of podcasts. Yeah, there you go. The Blubbity Blah. The Blubbity Blah. Sending out good vibes. The Blubbity Blah. Good vibes. The Blubbity Good vibes. The Blubbity Blah. Good vibes. Good vibes. Underneath breaths of deep gratitude and prayers for guidance and protection. And put on a didgeridoo and shamanic drumming track. What's acceptable that that word doesn't even exist in my vocabulary. You know, what's acceptable is what I say is acceptable. What society says is acceptable doesn't have to be uh, my de- definition of acceptable. Okay, guys, welcome back to the Grand America Show. We are going to be chatting with Hotep Jesus, a.k.a. Brian Sharp. Or maybe it's Brian Sharp, a.k.a. Hotep Jesus. I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, we're going to be chatting with him a little bit. Fun chat, good chat. Maybe a little controversial chat at times. But he's a fun cat, and we enjoyed it. Uh, and we got everybody's favorite podcaster over here, Grand Personalized Spam Dunlop. How have you been getting? Have you have you been getting any actual personalized spam, or just the personalized spam spam? Uh, not enough spam gram, but Plenty some personalized spam. spam. Yeah, it's it's, it's uh. There's spammers are getting through the Grimerica filters, and uh, well, we use the Microsoft filter, so I'm just you know saying. Yep. Okay, you know what are you just saying? <clears throat> that we're not on Google, we're not on Gmail, right? No, we're on Microsoft. So, you know, the other not, we're not on the we're other. Just other on one. the other <laughs> <laughs> So they're probably in cahoots with Microsoft. You know, it's yeah, just probably. A new, do we want to talk about Hotep first, or you want me to talk about the spam? Remember, McAfee said Microsoft Outlook. Oh, was the safest e- Microsoft was the safest email, huh. which is what the handler told us too. Wow! But I'm not convinced those two aren't both shills. Yeah, exactly. You just never know. You just never know. Anyway, so tell us about your little email problem. You think that someone has actually taken the time to personally uh, well, <clears throat> type out and send you spam, not, not show me. spam, but it is just to you. What I what happens is they they dig up an old podcast on our website so it would be like grimerica slash 249 or whatever but for the point of the argument i think it's a robot or an algorithm no it's ha- i can show you all the examples okay. and it's not it's, okay i don't think it is you think it's I'm pretty good at, at picking out the the robot al- algorithm the bots so they come up with doing, an old thing and then they paid for it yeah, I think it's it's a it's the new way. So instead of so how long spamming, do you think it takes that guy to find that page and find that link and email you? Too long, five yeah. minutes. Too long for what they're doing because they're never. I've never responded to one of them, and there's been hundreds over the months, over the last couple of years, and it's a very personalized. Hey, I found this link. Would you like to add this link to your blog? The, I mean, the only thing is they call it blog, but it's not a blog. It's just notes from a podcast mm-hmm. on our website. I think they would catch that right away if it was like a person. That's the first clue I have. That well, it's yeah, but I don't. I just don't think they know. Or it's somebody that's. Yeah, <laughs> English that's is because, a second language. Yeah, it's not. I wonder. I wonder if it's always. If they so, I'm wondering what blog. the script is. Well, why don't I read it? I, yeah, I mean, why don't we read? Okay, let's just do this. All right, here, let's play a jingle okay. then. Bot or not? Is that the? That's the segment. I can, I can go back and read. <laughs> bot it or that. not? Bot Perfect. Not. We could play this on Twitter too. Hi Graham, my name is Jenny. Hope you're doing well. I was reading slash unger Some interesting stuff there, and I noticed you linked to e3expo.com. We've put together an incredibly detailed post on online gaming. There are some fascinating facts in there. Here's the link to it. Broadbandsearch.net slash blog slash online gaming statistics. How about linking to it? I'm sure your audience would appreciate the info and it should help your SEO efforts as quality outbound outbound links are hugely important. A win-win for both of us. What do you think? Thanks, Jenny. (laughs) Then this is what they do. This is what they do. So you think Jenny wrote that? No, I don't know. This is this is interesting. This is bot or not. There's a, 
Then what they do is they take that email, they forward it to you again. So what's the date on the first email? And these are always Wait, let's different. Let's see if we can like, find a date. Let's see if we can find a date pattern. What's the date on the first email? It doesn't, that doesn't matter. They could still be human, human date patterns. Still, human made date it'll patterns. It'll be another clue. November. Okay. The first one was uh, 1123, November 15th. All right. Yeah. We start with the date and time on the second one. November 20th, 1131. So a couple minutes after, five days later, you know, a couple minutes, you know, yeah. five days and a couple minutes. Hi, Graham. I want to follow up on my recent email about your post. Did you get a chance to read it? I definitely think our content would add to yours. Let me know what you think. Thanks, Jenny. Is that the last email? November 26th. So six days later, 4.10 a.m. So early in the morning. Ooh, that could be So a Jen was up at 4 a.m. this time. She was up at 11 p.m. Hi, Graham. No, no, that was 11 a.m. So. Okay. This you is know the start did, of her day. Does it say where she is? No. Just checking in one last time. I'm not going to be full stalker here. I'm not going full stalker here. Did you see my previous emails? I was thinking it might also be an option for us to write a guest post for you if that works better. Just like the post I shared with you before, it would be very well written. Just like the post I shared with you before, it would be very well written and researched. Let me know. Thanks, Jenny. So that's, you know, but I know what you mean. I see what you're yeah. saying, but I've got enough of these and they're all different. <clears throat> I'm going to try to find another one because it's. Find another one. Yeah. I've got, I get so many now. Might take me a while here though, because I think I delete them. Do I delete them? Hmm. Read Anyways. the, read part of it again. Read the end of it. I'm going to see if I type it into Google, what comes up. Uh, <laughs> what what end of the last one? Or end well, what's, of the what's she trying to get you to replace? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, do, I'll read that. So Jenny Rodriguez. We've put together an incredibly detailed post on online gaming. Is that what you meant? Yeah, what's the post? Where is it? Broadbandsearch.net slash blog slash online gaming statistics. Why would they? Why? I just don't see why. Slash online gaming statistics? Yeah, yeah. This page is missing. I have no idea where it went. You might have followed a bad link or mistyped the address. Feel oh, free to try again. Alternatively, you can return to the home page. Oh, I got it. I found another one. Awesome. Oh, did I just get a pop-up now? Am I getting fucking pop-ups now? <laughs> <laughs> well, you put okay, that I got two thing. more. Do you want Okay, here, I got two more. You ready? Okay. I'll do the, the quick one first. Hello, I've been following your blog and really like the content in it. By any chance, do you let people guest post on your site? I didn't see anything about it on your website. Sincerely, Kevin Gardner. And then, so that was, uh, I don't know when that was actually. And he says, so now he's forwarding that to me again, right? Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm sure you must get a lot of emails. So I just want to make sure mine didn't fall through the cracks. I would love to contribute high quality content for your site. May I ask what your guidelines are for guest posting? Thank you, Kevin Gardner. Like that's pretty, what are the times? that's pretty smooth. Well, that's five o'clock on a Tuesday. PM, AM? PM. What about the next one? The, the, I, I told you I don't, doesn't have, he didn't, uh, I don't know, actually I'd have to do some more. I don't know when the first one is. Okay. I'm saying bot. Full on bot. Okay, here's another one. All right. Hi, Graham. I'm Larry, coffee aficionado from Coffee Gear Spy. So this is a little bit more, you know, up front, right? We're still something of, of a new kid on the block when it comes to sharing our thoughts on the Heavenly Brew. I saw your article at, and this is a lot of them, right? I saw your article, saw your blog. 
ep slash 281 and really love that you mentioned bulletproof.com. So they're searching for bulletproof and then they find all those links and they try and get you to link this, this other coffee, right? Yes, I agree that I agree with the process. I just don't agree with who's executing it. So I'm saying, uh, so he's like, I'd love to share what we found out more widely. If you're able to help us, we'd be ecstatic, but this day and age, I really understand if it isn't viable. So free linking isn't an option. I'd be reaching out to see what your best option to link to the site. So they're asking, they're saying, hey, you can, we'll pay you to link to this. Thank you very much for letting me know. And then- $5,000. And then, and then, so that one was at November 1st, 422, right? Reply to okay. one. Just wait. And say we want just wait. 10 grand. Just wait. November 7th. Say. Just, just wait. November 7th, 1252. Larry, again, just pop it into your mailbox to say hi, P PM. You might remember we got in touch recently. It'd be great to know if that first message was of use to you. We're passionate about coffee. We love to share our research, part, practical tips, thoughts, and feelings. Did you get a chance to consider our idea? Larry Wells, chief editor at Coffee Gear Spy. And then th there is a link. Just click here if you don't want any more emails from me. Just click here if you shouldn't you have to reply to Larry if you don't want any more emails from him? Because when I have to click to unsubscribe, it's usually because it's part of a chain mail or a bot yeah, generator. Yeah, yeah. So is it to you, just you, or is it to undisclosed recipients? No, no, it's just to me. Yeah. I mean, they even say hi, Graham, in there a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's my email, obviously. Yeah. So. I'm not naive to the, to the, the, just a little naive. You no, got, no, no, naive. no, I'm not naive to the, Technology of bots and the okay. you know the potential there, it's sounding like a real human. Yeah, yeah, especially via text. It just maybe they've improved over the last few years, but I know a few years ago I could really spot the They're bots. They're getting close to fooling you. I'm telling you, you're not far away from being fully, fully scammed. You got to be extra. Me or uh, everybody in general? I mean, everybody in general. They're just, they're not really scamming. Like, I don't think, I mean, that was weird when you search that. Curve. That was weird when you search that. But I mean, I think they're just trying to sell. Like, they're just trying to, they're, so somebody's, I think somebody's what's going the, through. What's the other one? Coffee Spy? Somebody spends all day, maybe they're in, you know, India or something. And, oh, now I got to find it again. So I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember. Coffee Spy. Yeah. Anyways. CoffeeGearSpy.com. Yeah, that's com. one. Yeah, that's one yeah. That one could be legit. No, none of them are in, legit. Because he came in, like, you know, saying who he was. and They all said that. Do... Uh, See, I think somebody for cheap. Look at the website. I think somebody for cheap, right? Look at the website. I know. What, what does that mean? What do you think this guy's marketing budget is? He's paying a human to email people fucking individually? No, not him. It's just a, it's a conglomerate type thing. Mm. This isn't even, they're not even from our caffeinated blog. November 26, 2019. <clears throat> Long before that gorgeous, fragrant brew trickles into our coffee cups, it starts life as a rather lovely evergreen plant. So they might, they might. Well, we typically think of coffee as growing on an airy hillside in South America or in a subtropical farm in Indonesia. Many varieties happily, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Anyways, I mean, maybe he pays somebody online to do advertising, and that's like, this is their way of doing it, you know, that they go in and try and get uh, get people to link to their stuff, right? Oh, go around and find all the bulletproof people, and then get that link in there. I'm not buying it. <clears throat> do you think full-on bot? Yeah, full on. All bot. of those? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of those? Yeah. I don't know why. So do they do the bots find the links too? Yeah. And then they start generating emails. Yeah. And why do they pick my email and not yours? Because mine's not publicly posted on the website. It is, it was. No, mine mine if you like click my name, it might pop up or something, but no, I don't think it's on there at all anymore. Hmm. I've said it on the show, but it's not publicly available. Well, why don't you get rid of mine then? Spam why why is it a whole fucking you're, you're, category? You've got like so a, I'm getting you're, real spam you're, now. You're, this is becoming a problem. You're a button on the website. It's a spam <laughs> <This is> becoming, <laughs> Boom, and it just opens up now your I'm email starting to get instantly. real spam. So maybe it's, 
Maybe it's a problem now. Well, it was always going to happen. I don't care. I can, I can tell. <laughs> sure can. I haven't replied to either of them, any That's of them right. yet. So. You do send a lot to me for a second opinion, though. No, 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 I don't even, those ones, I don't even bother. Spam? Question mark? No, Most not those ones. You funny. banking. Or... Yeah. Anyway, what else you got? That took up 20 minutes. I don't feel like talking about anything. <laughs> That's it. End of the yeah. show. Yeah. The spam interest. No, it's a great chat with Hotep. We're only, you know what's really interesting? He's the in. only one that's answered how to tell the difference between your the voice in your head and intuition. What was the answer again? I'm not going to tell you. I don't want to spoil it for people. Why not? Let's just leave a little bit of a cliffhanger. But he's the only one that's been able to answer that, you know? All right. Well, the intro is not over anyway. I got a couple quotes, a couple synchronicities, the real emails I like to get not that spam. aren't bought. Maybe some of them are. Maybe someone should make a bot that actually sends crap feedback and stuff and see. Where should I go? YouTube? YouTube oh, sounds fun. Bingo, bingo. Social media jingle. Don't forget to rate, comment, and or subscribe. Okay. We got on the Alan Stivelman episode. I love this episode. Looking forward to watching the documentary. On the vaccine safety debate show, why can't Oof. we have more civilized and respectful conversations like these? Red Pill Junkie returns from Ben Bishop. I'll be honest, Red Pill. Don't throw away the Meyer case altogether. There's definitely something to glean from that case. Far as I'm concerned, no one has ever explained those amazing saucer photos, how he did it, where they are if they're models. They look pretty real to me, despite obvious hoax like strangeness peppering the case. Although I've been of the mind that those craft are the Corvettes of flying saucers, as in human style, the Meyer prophecies are interesting as well. Maybe a debate could be done on this show with Michael Horn, who Ooh, talks about the prophecies and more, and he's an all-in believer. Michael Horn's still going on about that? Wow. I don't know. It's don't. been years since I've heard him. I don't know. I don't even know who Michael yeah, Horn he's is. A, he, he goes into the Meyer stuff. Uh, Angie Allison on the Randall Carlson Unplugged Black Budget, number 287. I would like to know if there's a way to tell if oxygen levels changed after the youngest dryer, the younger driest impacts, and if that could play a role in the megafauna extinctions, and also if that could explain some of the large skeletons that have been found all over the world. Giants? Yeah, I think that's more because what? probably the growing earth, but I think the megafauna died because there was no food or sun for like a hundred years. Shit was pretty fucked up. Ah, uh, Red Pill Junkie returns. I was thinking how consistently calling him Uncle Tom DeLong could be very funny. <laughs> <laughs> ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. I've been wondering when Triple OG RPJ would be coming home. On the audio recording of the Recovery Dharma book. Nice work, guys. Thanks for this. Brady Aykroyd. Oh, is that Brady? Yeah, it's Brady. Brady, Brady. Uh, Dick Kahn, y'all should look into talking with Max Egan. On the Reed Summers app, the presence of a series of messages like this is something I've always hoped for and believed existed somewhere. I listened wow. to this episode when it aired, and I've just now begun to read the books of the transmissions. Wow. Everything sounds right and clear-minded so far, but I have to admit I have hit a snag in my thinking. It occurred in book one, briefing two, paragraph 25. It is, ex Jesus Christ, I shouldn't, this is a long one. Seems like a good one, though. Yeah, I want to I want to hear it. It occurred in book 1, briefing 2, paragraph 25. It is explained that humanity's independence and freedom is largely based on its ability to manage the resources it requires to sustain itself and that at the moment those resources are being depleted. I don't know anything about anything, but I cannot think of what resources are being spoken of here. Food, not likely. Clean water, also not likely to me. Clean air, a highly debated and controversial subject. Fossil fuels, another highly debated and controversial subject. Some people say we'll run out soon. Some people believe there is not a supply problem. Precious metals and minerals needed for technology? To me, that seems more likely. 
In the Q&A of Book 1, there is mention of biological resources and the Earth has a wealth of it, which others seek to control. Are these the resources that are being depleted, as they say? I'm flustered because the whole we're destroying the planet and draining its resources thing has also seemed to be an inflated tool used by those who ultimately wish to gain control over the power generation and resource management, convincing people that we're a bigger threat to life on Earth than we really might be, therefore necessitating tighter control over people's decisions. Assuming these transitions are the work of somebody's imagination, I can see how they might be influenced by the popular narrative of our, de- narrative of our depletion of resources. The lack of specification on what exactly is being depleted bothers me. Although, whoever is sending these messages is not at all required to explain, of course. Is it more to do with biological diversity or raw materials? Maybe as I read on, that will be explained more. But admittedly, this particular aspect of the transmission smells like someone who's trying to buy into the whole sixth great mass extinction theory, which seems like sensationalism to me and inaccurate. Maybe I understand it all wrong. I'll see. Any feedback to this mess of a comment would be super duper appreciated. I totally agree. That was exactly where I stumbled on that whole thing. Is that exact yeah, right. exact part? Is is it, he wasn't specific? And I'm like, are they getting into this? But it's almost like they weren't specific for a reason to not come across like that. You know, propagating that sixth extinction myth and all that. So they were either they were very careful. To not go there, to come across like that, but that's where I stumbled on it too. Think so? One hundred percent. All right, we'll I do made, one it more. Made me, it made me. It, it was a red flag for me, and I was like, "This. What are they talking about? Resources? Like why? You know? We'll are they?" F- <clears throat> and I think they were talking about long term, like eventually. You know, maybe you're running out of cer- some things, or, or, um, you know, that you still have to take care of the environment. You can't just destroy all of it. You know, well, you shouldn't destroy any of it. Well, you have to destroy some of it. I mean, even before technology was created, people were chopping down trees and using them for well, that's wheels and stuff it. like that. Well, you are. I mean, they're mostly using it for firewood, <laughs> probably. But yeah, I, I guess on that level. All right, let's move on. Three eighty nine, Dick Khan by Praying Manus. The recent Paul Stamets on Joe Rogan was crap. Oh, all about bees, his political and commercial views. Not like this podcast. Just give me the trip reports, dudes. On Randy Powell, Vortex Math, play this at 1.25 speed. Great episode, guys. Time runs funny in Canada. Unreal episode, guys. We're living in the Matrix. Uh, it- well, yeah, that was probably... Were we slow on that one? I don't know. 389, another possible use of the shrooms is for chronic pain or neuropathic pain. Unless someone has an actual break or a mechanical issue with their body, most chronic pain is neuropathic, and you have to find a way to change those pathways. CBD and THC work great in some cases, so I think shrooms might be worth a try. If it doesn't lessen the pain, it'll likely make you forget about it for a while. What's the neuropathic? What does that mean, neuropathic pain? I don't know. Neuropathic, so I think that would be like the same idea as like uh, stress-related. Yeah. Stress-related chronic stuff and uh, uh, autoimmune stuff where the body's attacking itself. It seems to be some sort because of Because you're up. in that, that also, that state of stress as well. Like you can't get into that. Um... No, he just says he thinks most pain is that, most chronic pain. And I think that's not a mechanical issue. What's the state that the float, float tank guys got get get you in? And the whole point of it is you're in that. Uh, I can't remember. You can't remember. Oh. What happened to all the Jingo Django jingles? I just played it. Uh, psychedelics equal manual evolution for some. You still can't fix stupid in one lifetime. You just have to breathe the stupid out. Oh boy. The replies is right. All right, that's enough. The social media, I think. Are you almost done there? Uh Let's do one more. Okay. I really want to microdose on shrooms. Mm. They've took the shroom emoji away. <laughs> Don't know about DMT though. They didn't take the shroom emoji away. You're mistaken. All right. That's all. Oh, I'll do one more. Randy Powell, Vortex Math. Fantastic. Best episode ever. Uh, we'll do one more. Oh shit, boys. 
Flurry is the best. His game six overtime goal made me a hockey fan. Then he came to New York and I loved it. I appreciate how honest he is about his whole life. He should be in the hall. Guy is amazing. Yeah. I was wondering if he was in the hall yet. He's not in the hall yet, not I don't yet. think. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, just, so just so listeners know, those two, Randy Powell and Theo Fleury, are episodes have that have yet to come out, out in podcasts. So They'll be out soon. Those are just the people commenting on the YouTube live that we did. That's right. Yeah. Which you can go check out if you can't wait. You can find those somewhere on the yeah. YouTube page. You got some quotes? Got well, yeah, quote. I, got, I got a couple quotes. Here nah, quotes. As I recall, we have to go to the email for that jingle because it's still not quite working the way it should be. America.ca slash support. It's the profound quote of the it. week. Darren, can you guess it? It's the profound quote of the week. Can you guess the human who spoke it? Wrote it down. Profound quote of the week. So this is from our favorite book here, The Octopus of Global Control, and it's from the chapter that's uh, subtitled "Order Out of Chaos." I used to say to him, "What's the point of all this? You have all the money in the world you need. You have all the power you need. What's the point? What's the end goal?" To which Rockefeller replied, paraphrasing, the goal is to get everybody chipped, to control the whole society, to have the bankers and the elite people control the world. That was from Aaron Russo, producer, from an interview about his conversations with his friend, Nick Rockefeller. Dun, dun, dun. What do you think? Uh... Might be a bit extreme. Seems a bit extreme, eh? But I think that's the goal. Maybe not the chip part, but they definitely want to control the if world. If you had all the money, you wouldn't want the working class to be able to f- upset the apple cart with a rebellion, I suppose. I got another one here. It kind of fits. All right. Uh, I think this might be from the same chapter. No, this is from the Council on Foreign Relations chapter. The most powerful clique in these CFR groups have one objective in common. They want to bring about the surrender of the sovereignty. This is, this is interesting because this is, this is quite a bit older than you'd think. They want to bring about the surrender of the sovereignty and the national independence of the U S they want to end national boundaries and racial and ethnic loyalties, supposedly to increase business and ensure world peace. What they strive for would inevitably lead to dictatorship and loss of freedoms by the people. The CFR was founded for the purpose of promoting disarmament and submergence of U.S. sovereignty and national independence into an all-powerful one-world government. What's the year? 1958, Harper's. That's from Harper's, July 1958. When when you think back to to the fifties, that's and that, that those types of quotes, it's like, yeah, they've they've been working it and it's almost worked. They're all fascist. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm just coming around. I've always been there, dude. I was there you, before you. Yeah, but you left for a while. I left for a Glad while. Let's see you back. coming back. Yeah, come back. I wasn't sure if you were gonna come back or not. I'm not fully back. You're not yet. fully back, no. but you're on your way back. Yeah. At least you're looking back. On my way. <laughs> you're looking back over your shoulder. Are we still recording? Yeah, we are. I hope so. Yeah. I lost my train of thought there as I started yeah, you're, ready. Yeah, you're kind of. I'm starting you know, to get ready for the live show oh, in 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah, you could just finish off this intro before yeah, you get that's into true. something else. Yeah. So what else you got? Multitasker. Well, I mean, we got uh, so we got to talk about uh, big thanks to somebody that's helping out with our artwork. Oh, right, Ellie. Yep, Ellie in the chats. Yeah, has taken over uh, Red Bubble. I Red guess, Bubble, say, well, which is GreatAmerica.ca slash swag. I think that still works. Yeah, let me see. It does. I was on there. Slash swag. Bang. 
hammers you over to the that page. So when I looked the other day, we had a bunch of new products available, some clocks and stuff. And uh, she's been getting the shirts available in all the different sizes and the V-necks and the kids' jumpers and the ladies' stuff and all the stuff that just, it really takes a lot of time that just it was never getting to. We never had any time to get to it. So Because I guess you got to design that stuff on Redbubble it itself. It takes some and time. Then you, and then you post it you and then people can buy that stuff. change the sizing yeah, and all yeah. that. Yeah, it gets pretty carried away. So now you can get this, as you see, you can get this in all the different hoodies. Nice, yeah. You can get it as a little laptop skin. So Ooh. you can get Grand America laptop skins. Now. That's pretty cool. How uh, much is that guy? iPad case, the laptop skin. We just get a couple bucks out of it, really. It's not much, but it's uh, it helps. The laptop Every skin helps. is 30 bucks for a mm. MacBook Air, a 2015 huh. MacBook Air. If you've got uh, a MacBook Pro. That's the third jersey, Grand America yeah. artwork there. Is it the third jersey, the Phoenix, yeah. the three-headed yeah. Phoenix? Yeah. Oh, is it a three-headed Phoenix? Yeah. Oh, I'm wearing the shirt right now. You're wearing it, yeah. yeah. We got scarves, we got tote bags, drawstring bags, greeting cards, stickers, notebooks, journals. And uh, so guess what? In the home decor, you can get- Decor? A, decor. <laughs> you can get a duvet cover or a comforter. Oh, my God. Or a throw blanket. So I was- You get a Sleep, shower curtain. Sleeping with Grand America. Shower Showering curtain, with Grand America. Coasters. Bath mat, you can get Grimerica branded bath wow, mats. thanks. Photographic thanks, prints. I mean, I might get the Grimerica comforter just to have it. I mean, you know what? Maybe we should get a Grand Grimerica comforter just to have here in case someone has to sleep on the couch. Sure. They have a Grimerica yeah. comforter, a little Grimerica pillow, a little passport stamp pillow. That's cool. They yeah. have Grimerica <laughs> mouse traps as well if somebody's going to stay on the couch. Uh, Ooh, the mice like... are going to get worse in the winter. Yeah, are they? Yeah. My new, our space isn't that great for a mouse, you know? They're probably figuring that out after yeah. the year. They're like, these guys have no food. They have nothing to drink. They got nothing. <laughs> so, yeah, check it out. Grammerica.ca slash swag. You can get yourself a king size uh, Grammerica comforter. So the other thing we should talk about is, uh, well, big thanks to Ellie, first of all. Thank you very much for showing the initiative and jumping in and helping out. There's lots of ways you can help out. You could probably join the chats too to ask as well. There's lots America. of people there. slash chats. Yeah. Absolutely. And then yeah. there's, a, there's a black budget. There's a couple of new black budget episodes out. And the way to get access to that is any any donation, any one-time donation. Or if you can't even afford it, just email me and we'll give you access anyways. I mean, yeah. it's really just. But ideally uh, you signed up for a monthly. Yeah. Because we need the support. Yeah. And uh, we're reading the David McGowan book from 2001, was it? 2000? 2000. Called Understanding the F Word. As in fascism, is that what it's called? American right. fascism and the politics of illusion. The politics of illusion. Fantastic book. Very interesting. Brings a lot of context to uh, fascism, the political yeah. environment. Absolutely. Yeah, and we might be doing, we'll, and we'll be doing more as well. And actually, uh, <clears throat> Eric, Eric P. Anthony's book, um, "Song of the Immortal Beloved," will be on Audible that we helped out with. Oh as yeah, well. we so that, so we'll let know. you guys know when that's all on Audible. We would love to see you guys all go out and buy that on Audible right away as soon as it does come out, so that we can maybe get Eric uh, trending, maybe get him on a list or something popping up. With our community, it would be great to take the first Grimerica produced audio book. And yep. use our audience to sort of push it over the hump and see if we can get it on the trending list or something like that. Yeah, again, that's like Song of the Immortal Beloved, and we'll let you know when that comes up, but that's a contemporary explanation of the spiritual alchemy. Yeah, it's 18 hours and 40 minutes is that long. what it is? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. 1840. Wow. And it's read by yours truly, Graham Dunlop. I and guess yours truly would be me. It's it edited by, by Darren, yours truly. Yeah. Yep. I didn't make the cover. Graham made the cover. That's right. I don't want to be on the cover of stuff. I like to be in the background. Graham at Gramerica.com. Is that it? Yeah, I'll save the synchros for next time. Got some listener synchros, or I can say one right now. 33 right, minutes. Right? Really? Let's just stop it right there. Perfect. Support the show. Gramerica.ca slash support. Please enjoy the chat. Otep Jesus.
we've got Hotep Jesus with us. He's been a tech startup advisor, an author, a speaker. He's got a couple books here. One was the Dominate Twitter. And unfortunately, I didn't have time to read this one, The Unbreakable Rules of Masculinity. Because we just found out yesterday we were going to be chatting with him. So welcome to the show. Thanks for, thanks for chatting. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, like we said, it was like 45 minutes after we had a cancellation. And... Oh, and it fits great. I mean... Uh, a lot of the, a lot of the stuff you're kind of into is the stuff we've been hitting lately. We've been, you know, hard on the being a better person and especially the masculine side of things, obviously, cause we're both dudes. We have another show that kind of focuses on, uh, on masculinity called 13 questions. And then, um, uh, I mean, lately it seems like me and you are in the same boat when it comes to politics. So, uh, yeah, I think the timing, timing couldn't be better to have you on the show, um, I think technically now, are you, were you a libertarian? Are you a libertarian or are you, you seem like you're going that way for a while, but now you seem to be like, I'm in the, I'm of the belief that they're all fascists and none of them want anything, but you know, corporate, the corporate takeover of eventually the entire planet. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I never had any political alignment. I uh, used to describe myself as a mercenary for conservatism, volunteer mercenary for conservatism, because I saw them getting their ass whooped <laughs> by the liberals. Um, libertarian, I never really took serious. I always thought libertarian was like uh, people who want to be conservative, but are too scared to say they're conservative. Uh, they don't want to deal with the blowback that comes along with that. So I'm, I never really took them serious. But, you know, recently... Uh, or, a few couple of days ago, Maj Torre was actually removed as keynote speaker at the, you know, Libertarian PAC event or whatever the fuck they have. And uh, as somebody who's been banned from TPUSA events, I kind of see a trend going on here. It's like, you know, if you got wrong think or if uh, the, don the donors don't like you, uh, then you're out, you know. Um, you, you basically blackball from whatever the fuck club, I guess, they got going on. Uh, but you know, uh, all this shit is a business. It's all money. It's all games. I don't take it too serious. Um, I look at it as a vehicle to, uh, open people's eyes. So if you ever want to have a conversation with somebody, you basically want to find something you guys can relate to. So I find that politics has become pop culture. So being abreast on the situations in politics and events of politics, Allows me to talk to people and understand people better. You know, once you understand their political leanings. And then from there, I can introduce them to new ideas. But, uh, yeah, I don't identify as any of these labels. The only thing I identify is as is, is Hotep. What exactly is, uh, what exactly is the, the Hotep moniker? I see a lot of Hoteps all over the place. Yeah. Uh, it's like the nuclear family, man. It's like... It's a very holistic view of life. Um, it's it's about the culture. So, you know, you'll hear people say politics is downstream from culture. Well, obviously, you know. Um, so we're more concerned with, you know, what is the culture that we're representing and the culture that we're creating and the culture that we're passing down to our children? Um, what's the mentality? Is it a victor or victim mentality? You know, a lot of people are running with this whole victim mentality versus victim mentality. This is something we were on in, you know, years ago. <laughs> you know, this is what we were preaching. Um, but, you know, if you ever read a Napoleon Hill book, Napoleon Hill could be described as hotel, you know, just knowing you can get something done and then go ahead and doing it uh, and, and, and not too much complaining about stuff, you know? Yeah, Think and Grow Rich is probably one of my, it's a, it's hard because the reading list is fluid. I feel like it depends what day of the week it is to where my top five books might fit in. But uh, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich is always in the top five. I've been chipping away at his whole like collection now for a while, but that dude was ahead of his time, man. I mean, he must have started Think and Grow Rich, I think, in like 1912 or some shit. And he's like, I mean, and now you just look at the whole market that's just been created off of Think and Grow Rich. I mean, you look at the secret, all that stuff is just they're mining Think and Grow Rich and taking all the shit out of that. And it's like. Yeah, he's the father of that whole genre. 
Yeah, man. He I like, nailed I like, it. Uh, I like outwitting the devil. I feel like that's his best word. Who is that? Fiction? Outwitting the devil? Yeah. No, it's, Nap- it's a Napoleon Hill book, right? Like, right in the same line as Think and Grow Rich. Just I'm going to have to dig that up. Yeah. I mean, you can listen to it free on YouTube, too. Um, but, I mean, that one is more... Uh, it's basically a conversation he has with this persona he calls the devil. And um, the topics in there are a lot more taboo than the ones in uh, Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich is very, like, normie safe. Yeah. Um, when you start getting into what he talks about in Outwitting the Devil, a lot of people aren't going to be able to handle what he's saying, <laughs> especially if you're religious. <laughs> That's interesting. That's kind of like, uh, you know, that reminds me of like what Scott Adams did, where he's got his like um, his self-help sort of stuff. And then he's got that God's debris, which is just sort of like. It's wild. It's just like, you know, it's a quick read. It's an hour long, but it, it's a, I mean, he calls it a thought experiment and it's a pretty apt way of describing it. Yeah. And no, I didn't check that out. I got to check it out. Yeah. It's definitely worth it. If you like Scott Adams stuff. I mean, I thought, uh, how to fail at everything and still win big was kind of one of the books that sort of opened the door of all this stuff for me, for sure. Hmm. Hmm. But I mean, I agree with all that. That's like, that's my main, my, the thing I keep coming back to is that it doesn't matter what ism you want to run with. You can have it, you know, capitalism, socialism, court, it doesn't matter. You pick your ism. If, as, as long as we got people that aren't, um, as long as we're not creating the best people that we can, then we're going to have a fucking pile of shit. <laughs> that's absolute truth. That's the absolute truth, man. So I guess that's Although, that's kind of what the hoteps are pushing for. It's more of a culture movement than. Yeah, I, I you know, uh, you look at where conservatism is today, as opposed to in the fifties, you wouldn't even be able to recognize it. You know, conservatism today is liberal in the fifties. Um, you know, we we see. Uh, drag queens hanging out with conservatives at their events you know um that's not even you know forget political leanings that's just that's not even described as an adjective conservative (laughs) you know uh so um we're in a very odd place in time um i feel like uh the quote unquote black experience in America is very much subject to the decisions that white people make in America. So it behoves us to get involved in some of the decision making and some of the influence in politics and culture to at least try and say this stuff in the right direction. Somebody's got to speak up. Somebody's going to say something. A lot of times people say, oh, you're trolling, you're trolling. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm just going in a whole nother direction than you. It seems like you guys kind of go in the direction of what's acceptable, you know, and what's acceptable that that word doesn't even exist in my vocabulary. You know, what's acceptable is what I say is acceptable. What society says is acceptable it doesn't have to be uh, my def- definition of acceptable. So I'm looking to break all those mental chains and barriers that people say you can and cannot do, can and cannot say. I'm, I'm here to break PC culture. You know, I'm not here to say the right things. I'm here to say the things that people need to hear, um, whether people think it's right or wrong. Um, but I have a lot in my head and I have a lot to express. And I'm not going to let somebody else's rules um, dictate, you know, how I express myself or when I express myself. I'm not going to censor myself. I try not to. Um, although some subjects you kind of got to tap dance around. Yeah. Because uh, it can't be talked about. But, um, you know, other than that, I... Uh, you know, I feel like a lot of people aren't speaking up, you know, a lot of people are afraid to speak up. So I mean, sometimes I feel like if I don't say it, who's going to say it, you know? Yeah. That's one thing I've realized from listening to you for last on and off for the last day or two here, just to get ready for this is that you're really not getting stuck in that victim mode. You're, you're solution orientated and your visualization is, is like through the roof, you know, whatever you can imagine you can become, and it's really, you know, you're not even uh, even on tech censorship, uh, the way I heard you describe that being a positive thing, you know, it's like, hey, this is a wake up call and this is an opportunity for a bunch of people. You know, it's hard for me not to get 
I, I just get stuck in complaining about that, you know, like being a victim over the censorship that like, this is what's, what's happening now. And, uh, yeah, you seem to be like looking at that from the glass half full. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, the future is going to have what the future be- holds. Uh, and it's pretty much inevitable that, and when it comes to technology, there's going to be a, uh, a mainstream and an underground. There's going to be um, government and there's going to be cypherpunk. It, you know, all the, uh, all the fiction writers and people are all dreaming about this stuff because they know it's going to become a reality. Um, technology is going to be highly governed. Uh, so you're going to need some, some backdoor technologies etc um you're gonna need the tor browser we're gonna need our own isps but i just feel like you know like this war is gonna be very techie we're, we're headed for a very techie war mm-hmm. and it's time to strap your boots and get ready because <laughs> it's coming <laughs> you know like well, you youtube's gonna do what it's gonna do i mean it's like well, it's not just YouTube, it's Facebook, it's Google, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's everywhere. That's the problem. The scary part is the payment, the payment processors. And again, you know, it gets pretty deep. I think there was one, one guy that just got cut off from PayPal recently as well. Yeah, but- and there's, so it's, it, it's not just that the you're not allowed to voice it. It's that you're all of a sudden they're cutting the lines of support away as well. But that's what I say. Like you can jump and scream and post and, and yell and complain all you want, but that's not going to change their thing. You're, your time is better spent figuring out how you're going to fucking tap dance around that. Well, I think it's, like, it's like okay I said, to it, highlight it, though. Well, I mean, people well, have I mean, to know, right? One day we'll be selling muffin cookbooks for 150 bucks a piece on some separate entity so that we can get paid for Grimerica, and that'll be like the thing. Head to suziesmuffins.com and buy a book if you want to support the show. <laughs> I like whatever we got to do to to get there, I guess. Yeah, you're going to have to be innovative. And somebody's going to be that pioneer. Somebody's going to lead that charge and people will migrate and follow their lead. And then somebody else will pioneer and create another fork. Um, but um, it, that's what kind of bugs me about the whole political scene is the fact that, you know, today everybody's talking about impeachment this, impeachment that. And, you know, people are always just glued into the politics show, right? So politics in America is now pop culture. Uh, it's a place where influencers can get uh, some serious income uh, by milking people's emotions, by keeping this political war going. You know, this this political machine uh, has cogs in it that keep it going, and all these political pundits and influencers are those cogs that kind of keep this machine running uh, and keep people distracted. Uh, so when we think about things like uh, tech censorship, you know, they they want to head to legislation. And uh, I just feel like it's a slippery slope because every time they go to create new legislation, uh, it ends up affecting the people. Um, so I feel like, you know, the people need to be more unified. Uh, it's really hard to fight the tech companies when you're already fighting yourself, you know, the so-called left and your so-called right. Yeah, but I just see I see white people just killing themselves as opposed to saying, "Hey, look, we have a serious enemy ahead of us. Let's drop this, you know, I hate Trump thing. Let's drop this I hate AOC thing, and let's look at the things that seriously matter around us because these politicians are playing a game and they're getting rich off of playing our emotions." Yeah, that's where I think it's that's that's where I come in with the whole fascism angle because it seems to me like both parties are content to just keep saying whatever the fuck they got to say, but it doesn't matter who's in power. The policies and the legislation all keep pointing in the same direction. And it's all just a matter of, you know, making the emotions get so we can. And I mean, that's kind of the the problem with that, that Trump brought in is because I feel like, you know, everyone had just about given up on it, on politics and the two. And, you know, everyone was kind of getting to the point where it's like, okay, the government is fucking it. And it seemed like everyone was there and it's like, okay, well, let's throw a black guy in and then we'll get Trump in here yelling and screaming. And now we've got, now we've got the political polarization at a level that I haven't seen in my lifetime. And that's all happened in in three years. They managed to do that. So now we've got like guys who used to be stars of the hip hop world at the fucking white house jamming with the president. Like Tupac would be fucking rolling over in his grave. 
<laughs> I think, right? Like you got the the leaders of the music industry who used to be the people that were bitching against the man. Now just there saying, hey, you know. Well, there's just, still plenty of them bitching about the man. Not. About Orange Man, yeah. Oh, yeah, about Orange Man. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe that's what we need a Trump so that we can get the artists back to hating the president. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm, it's just. I don't know. Um, we're just in a weird place right now, man. It's never going to be the same. I don't think. I, I just think. Does. I just think it's, he's blown it open, and and it is it is polarized. But a lot of people are waking up to the facade now, so it's never going to go back to to the. No, way there's it no was. putting like, it back in the bottle. You think people are waking up? Yeah, I think so. I don't I think know. People go, I think people are going back to sleep. Yeah, it's yeah, it's hard to say. <laughs> there's a little of both, I think. Yeah. It, it's a real hard metric to track because there's like people going down. and But at the same time, I mean, I see just in our community, just in our little community, people that were like anti-government a few years ago are now like, you know, fuck the liberals or fuck the conservatives. You know, it's like those people got sucked back. Graham got sucked back in for a while. He's like teetering on the fringes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard when politics becomes pop culture, right? It's like, it's not even politics anymore. This is like what everybody's talking about. So you kind of have to talk about it sometimes. Yeah. Um, you can try to avoid it, but it's just uh, it's so prevalent now. Um, so is that a Trump thing? Because I don't know. I feel like it wasn't like that before. Even during Obama, I feel like everything was still just sort of like, yeah, you know, every no one gave a shit about politics. Yeah, yeah. Under Obama, it wasn't like that at all. This is definitely uh, a first. I feel like the nation was ready to rebel at the end of uh, Bush's presidency. And then um, Obama kind of quelled the nation. And then here's Trump, like the perfect scapegoat, the perfect distraction. Um, and just kind of set everybody back. And they, like they used him to divide the country. They used his image to divide the country when, you know, I didn't I didn't see what in his message divided the country. I thought his message was unifying the country. Um yeah, you know, I don't know. Um, I, I think that's why you. That's why Darren thinks yeah. it's more of a setup. Like I, I, I. That's what so I, I guess, would think. So we agree it. on that. The only difference yeah. is you would say it's the media and the deep state that's setting Trump up to do that, yeah. and I would say that Trump is a willing participant to some yeah. to some effect. Yeah. Yeah. I say that I say that the onus is on people, man. I feel like if you vote, you're a terrorist to me, man. I feel every time I see somebody talking about vote, and I just be looking at it like, are you setting us back, man? Yeah. Like every time you go to that voting booth to go vote on the federal election, I'm just like, hey, you keep setting us back, bro. Like, fuck the federal government, man. Act like they don't exist. Nobody show up at the polls. What are they going to do then? Like, like literally, like if nobody shows up at the poll, what are they going to do? And How like, are they going to elect a new president? Hillary Clinton wins with three votes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then they'll force change. you to vote. Yeah. Like, even then, with like, what changes, right? Yeah. Like, doesn't change foreign policy. That's not going to change whatever plans they have for America, you know? Well, that's one way to look at it. I mean, that's the part of it that <clears throat> we like to wash our hands of. And that's where I say, like, you know, when I say they're all fascists, that means that by, you know, definition, we're fascists too. And, you know, maybe we're not fascist personally, but we're definitely being okay with it. We're you know, participating. we're participating. And I, what I like to say is like in a thousand years from now, when someone's reading a history book, they're not going to say, well, you know, these people were just, you know, they weren't just kind of ignorant because they were busy watching TV and football. And, you know, they, you know, they, they weren't part of the bomb in the other side of the world fucking every day for thousands of days straight. But I don't think history will be that kind to us. I mean, that's kind of the thing where, I don't know. Uh, uh, just us paying taxes and participating and not raising a stink or trying to make a change, I guess, is is a level of. Yeah, like every time you vote, you're basically saying, good job. You guys are doing a great job. Keep it going. That's exactly what a vote means. You know, I, like voting your local election is fine, but the federal, 
Like every time you vote, you're basically saying, you know what? I agree to these illegal wars overseas. It's literally what you're saying. You're saying, great job. Keep it going, fellas. No matter you what country think? do you think, even even like Canada? Well, you know I, what I say. I, I, <laughs> I do. I deal with America. I don't know what goes on in any other country. Yeah. I deal with the country I live in. I know what's going on here because I live here. I don't know what's going on in any other countries. If, you know, I, I can only speak on on what we got and and what I see. Maybe it's similar in other countries. I don't know. I just know here in America is some bullshit. Um, and 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 the the average American voter is just not educated. Uh, enough to even make a decision uh, on who should be president. Um, the whole process of electing the president is broken. Um, I mean, you have to be a millionaire to be a president. Like, how does that make sense? Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. Like, you know, take the money out of politics. That's why I was happy that um, Twitter decided to uh, ban political ads. I thought yeah. that was a great idea. Yeah. You know, either you got, either you, either the people like what you got or you don't. Like, you shouldn't be trying to game the system with, you know, with money. Yeah. And I feel the same way about marketing too. Like everybody tries to like game the system with advertising. And it's just like, well, are people buying your product because they like it or are they buying it because they saw an ad, you know? Um, and you end up having a drop off of customers because of, you know, the advertising spend has changed. Um, but it's just really inorganic. But um, yeah, like if you vote, you're a terrorist to your own nation. You, you literally are. Um, if you if you if you uh feed into this system emotionally into these po- political games on twitter all day you're a terrorist you're a terrorist to your nation cuz the nation needs healing they don't need politics the only purpose of a government is is for an uncivilized people if the people were civilized we wouldn't need we wouldn't need government so the presence of a government is basically the presence or the the uh, admitting that people are uncivilized. And if people act civilized, we wouldn't need no government. And not voting would be an act of being civilized. Um, as we know, democracy is mob rule. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I've I've voted before. Um, actually, I voted once um, for Obama, and I did that just because he was black. Um, but... I I don't I usually don't vote in the federal elections. Yeah, I didn't either for quite a while until this last one. Yeah, I, I, got, yeah, I got sucked. I got sucked right I'm not, in. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, I'm not voting in the next election either. Yeah, I spoil my ballot. I like to do that. I'll make the effort to go down there and write something clever. <laughs> I, I'm I want to pull a permit and protest and tell everybody go to fuck home. Oh yeah, don't you, I don't. I wonder what they do if you tried that in Canada. We should try that next time. We'll go out in front of the thing there, and we'll just be like, "We'll get some signs. Don't fucking vote." <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think people know what to do, right? I mean, I think people might agree with this ideology, and you know, just re, you know, resist the government. Like we had uh, Thaddeus Russell on before, which was very much like this. Um, you know, create your own sort of your own market, your underground, whatever. But it's hard for people to imagine how they would separate out from playing the the, the game, you know? That's because they can't imagine themselves without it. Yeah, maybe. That's because they don't have faith in themselves. That's it's not it has anything to do with the government. It has everything to do with their own insecurity and inability to feel like they could uh provide for themselves and provide for their own safety. And that they feel like uh we need this so called government. The government doesn't do shit but harass us. That's that's all it does. Uh, the government doesn't protect us. It's not required to protect us. It never has protected us. Um, so I don't. I don't see the purpose of having one. So you that know, that uh, gets that gets back to what you we were saying before about consumers and entrepreneurs, like being on the other side of that. You know, visualizing yourself as a uh, what was the word you used? Uh, Victor. Hmm. Victor. No, 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 no. That's kind of like it, but it, this is different. It's more on a consumer versus um creator base or whatever i guess you know visualizing yourself as an entrepreneur or an influencer instead of an endorser maybe i don't know yeah uh they call themselves influencers but really they're just endorsers you heard me say that before yeah 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 
But yeah, but the yeah. one was more about the consumer part, like because you know we fall into the trap of either being a, a creator or a consumer, and I think to try and visualize ourselves as, you know, not getting sucked into that that job where you're where you're relying on somebody else to pay your wage, but find your own path, find your own, you know, means. Eek it yeah. out, yeah. But it's hard, man. It's hard to visualize that. I've been trying for six years. Yeah, that's working. Eeking out a little corner, of the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it yeah it could be hard but everything that's worth something is hard well you know, i don't it's think not, it's not supposed to be easy i mean i don't know where yeah. we got that in our head that if you just take the easy life that you're going to be able to get ahead or you know or even get through i guess with any level of um fulfillment yeah yeah, it doesn't make no sense, you know. Um, either you're gonna believe in yourself or not. That's that's all it comes down to, you know. Um, if you don't, then you don't. You know, if you do, then great. But that's the only differentiator. And if you uh, have a pessimistic view on life, that says more about you than life itself. Yeah how how much do you attribute your success to visualization and and believing in yourself? Like a hundred percent, yeah. Uh, outside, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, outside of my my good upbringing from my parents, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's everything, you know. Like like we like when we set this interview up, I said my intuition told me to go ahead and, and do this interview with you guys, and then today you told me that forty five minutes before that, your uh, other uh, your other guest canceled, right? So there's this uh, alignment that happens that if we follow our intuition, life becomes really easy. Um, so I, I move when I move my intuition tells me to, uh, you know, so visual visualization is part of it. But the other half is just follow my instincts, man. You know, when that voice in your head talks, you know, or you get these ideas, you got to start acting on them. A lot of people get ideas and they put them on the back burner. They don't write them down or they don't act on them. Um, and it really sets them back. But God or the universe sets you up to succeed uh, all throughout life and all throughout your day. And it's just a matter of can you open your mind up to receive those thoughts and to act on them? You know, I could have ignored the thought to, to go on the Grand America show, but uh, here I am. <laughs> that's interesting because I find I, I've been on a path lately that's almost the opposite of that, where it's like I'm actively uh, arguing with the voice in my head because a lot of times I find it's trying to maybe take the easy route or maybe talk me out of doing something because it might be harder or something like that. Is that? Well, I think that's what I was trying to explain to you is there's it's, there's a difference between a your intuition in and and the yeah. voice and your and your ego voice, your negativity or your or your reflex of negative thinking is different, I think, than what Hotep's talking yeah. about with intuition. Like, I think intuition and how the would trick be your, is like how do you your authentic self yeah. creeping up? Right? Yeah. I met one of them on Saturday, but I can't remember much of it. Uh, of your authentic self, I think yeah. so. Yeah, he yeah. said a word, but I can't remember the word. Get that. Yeah, that's why I like that book, uh, Outwitting the Devil, by Napoleon Hill, because. Uh, that other voice is what he attributes in the book, the devil. Um, and it puts those uh, negative thoughts in your head, that doubt and fear. So anytime you have those type of thoughts, um, usually that's not your intuition. Uh, although your intuition can warn you uh, about danger. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think it comes with practice. Uh, you see the, the mind, the mind thoughts are very slow. Whereas, uh, the uh, intuitional thoughts are uh, like flashes of inspiration, flashes of light. So you can kind of tell which is which by the speed in which it happens. Usually the voice is really slow and like trying to reason through things. Right. And it's doing all these different calculations. Um, but the intuition voice is sort of like a flash of lightning. And uh, if you know how to pay attention to that, you can tell the difference between the two voices. Um, but you have definitely have three voices. You have your conscious voice, the devil's voice, and, the, and 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 God's voice. I guess you can say. Do you notice any times when uh, when 
those flashes of inspiration have a better chance of coming through? Like, uh, do you have a meditative practice or, you know, for, I mean, from what me, I've always noticed in the shower. I mean, that's, that's pretty, uh, cliche, but it seems like I get into that mode in the shower where I'm just thinking about washing my arm and nothing else. And that's when the relaxation response. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you can't listen and speak at the same time. <laughs> so the mind works the same exact way. Um, in fact, when you purchase uh, my book, Dominate Twitter, it comes with a book on subconscious mind reprogramming. Huh. So you get two books for the price of one. Um, but uh, we talk about how to clear out the mind. And a lot of that is focusing on the five senses. And you can't taste or listen to music and think at the same exact time. You have to do one or the other. You can rapidly alternate. You know, you might be listening to a song and think about something else. But you can't listen to a song intensely and think at the same time. You end up alternating between the two. Um, but usually when you're intensely uh, focused, uh, yeah, focused on one of the five senses, uh, the brain is quiet, which allows uh, influx of inspiration to enter the mind. Um, and, and that's when you get a lot of intuitive thoughts. That's why uh, meditation works and yeah. showers yeah. form a meditation. I like to just sit in the bathroom sometimes, just sit on the toilet. I get my best thoughts when I'm just sitting on the toilet. Yeah, just, that's that's uh, that's incredible advice. It keeps coming back to that concentration meditation or the mindfulness to get you to the the concentration meditation and that focus, and then and then then you can start to tell the difference between that speed of your intuition compared to that. Yeah, you know that it's droning like, negative thought because if you don't, it's hard to tell if you don't have any of that. It's like tricking yourself into that flow state, right? Whether you can do it by intense concentration on a sense, I guess would make a lot of sense or by, so like when I do it, what do I do? I don't know what I do. I just sit there and I just sit there and try and think about nothing. I remember like 25 years ago, I was at a, with a counselor and she was, I was expressing my love for hockey to play that to the sports. And she's like, that's your now time. And that was one of the first times I'd heard about, you know, being present or now time. And she would associate that, that love for sports, you know, with now time. Like that's when you get into that flow state where you're not worrying about anything else, but you're just playing the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Eckhart Tolle has that book, the power of now yeah. pretty good read. And yeah. he talks about being completely and totally present. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, it's just, it's super helpful. Uh, I think that, uh, if people could learn how to be completely and totally present, a lot of this stuff around them wouldn't affect them. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's it. I mean, I heard a great, great quote the other day that was like, uh, depression is worrying about the past. And then, I mean, obviously it's not for all cases, but for like 99% depression, you're focused too much on the past anxiety. You're focused too much on the future. And if you just come in on that present, it's probably not so bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say, oh, that's right. Oh, I'm reading that uh, Tao Te Ching. Maybe it's in that. That would make sense. Oh, the Tao, yeah. I just started it, and what I, I'm doing. Uh, did you hear Hotep talk about it before? No, yeah. I, I actually did it. <laughs> One of our listeners uh, said you got to read this book, and I said I'm so behind on books, and then it showed up at the at the mailbox. So I was like, <laughs> okay, but it works out good because I was like, well, geez, I could read this in an hour. But then I was like, uh, he was like, no, what you do is you read one per day you contemplate and you, and you contemplate it for yeah. the day. So yeah. I started doing that. I'd get up in the morning, read one page, and I just kind of sit with it for the day. Yeah, it takes me forever to read a book because, um, you know, I could, I could literally pick up a book and uh, it'll take me 15 minutes to read a page because I'll stop and think. <laughs> you know, and like really try to, uh, especially some of the heavier material about European history and socialism and communism. And then, um, so my mind to wander. And uh, I used to uh, think that was a bad thing that when I was reading that my mind would wander, I used to think that was a bad thing. And then I realized that those wandering moments are when uh, my body's actually absorbing the information and, and absorbing it on a deeper level. So I don't get discouraged anymore. Um, you know, I'll read a, a page and one quote would just stick out to me and in my mind and wander and I'll just allow it to happen. 
and then just like really like try to understand exactly what the guy was saying. Cause I mean, anybody can kind of like run through a book and just read the words on the page, but do you, do you uh, understand on a deep level what you just read? You know, like some people will say, um, it was a quick read. It was really good. And other people would be like, yo, I read it five times and I make $10,000 a month now. And it's like two different things, right? Because um, the way I write, I write in concise um, thoughts, concise sentences. So if you read my book fast, you're going to miss everything. Um, it, you really have to read each sentence really slow to understand what I'm saying because it's so, there's so many levels to it. Um, but some people read just to like, say, oh, I read a book a day. I read a book a day and they're just counting. But it's just like, well, how much of that information are you really able to take and empower yourself in the world with, you know? I've noticed lately that dabbling into some fiction can really make some of that nonfiction stuff pop too. What's Yeah, uh, I found out late in life about that, yeah. Yeah, what's some of your favorite fiction? Well, I just, you know, this summer I read... uh uh, 1984 and um, <laughs> Animal Farm. Oh, those are good ones. I, those are those are not, not got, those are not fiction though. No, <laughs> yeah, those, those we asked you about your fiction <laughs> yeah. things, not <laughs> not a documentary, right? Yeah. I've got a, I've got those stashed away because I figure they'll be illegal by the time my kids are in high school. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know. gather around, kids. Yeah, we'll go down to crazy old man Grimes's so he can read us Animal Farm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I i feel like uh fiction does help man and fiction helps your writing too you know there's a lot of descriptive words that you need to add to your vocabulary in order to be a good writer or uh, especially a good um sales copywriter uh so um you, you, a lot of those words you don't have in nonfiction books uh so the the variety of words in fiction are, are different from the variety of words in nonfiction. so they have a holistic vocabulary you definitely need to read uh right. fiction books yeah, that's kind of the main reason I started dabbling in it. <clears throat> Some of it's just amazing. Um, amazing just how, <clears throat> like, I just, ugh. go ahead, Graham. Yeah, well, I'm sure you're going to say amazing about the creativity in these in these fiction and sci-fi books and stuff, right? Or? Well, I just finished The Brothers Karamazov, and that book, I learned more about, like, human psychology and the human experience than I did in the last, like, half a dozen books I've read on actual human psychology, yeah. just in mm. the way he's able to, <clears throat> the way he's able to describe feelings that I've kind of felt, but haven't been able to even put words to him until I just read that paragraph. Yeah. And now he's just put something into words that I have. Now I know what I felt, but before it was just some fleeting you couldn't feeling, even articulate but it, some yeah. fucking Russian dude just articulated it for me. It, it, it fucking floored me. <laughs> it, it, I couldn't mm. believe it. I'm, and now I've, now I've committed to always have a work work of fiction on the go for that, just for that reason. I mean, I was reading another one the other day that just had this, it has this little like throwaway line in it. And it's, it's like a fantasy novel and it's got this, but this cat is teaching this guy how to control the universe with this magic book. And he, he's like, he's too aggressive when he says something and the shoe comes and it hits him in the face. And the cat's like, no, you got to use tone is super important when you're talking to the universe. And I was just like, I don't know, for some reason it just clicked with me when it comes to affirmations and everything else. And it comes down to like assertiveness. So if you really want something, you, you know, maybe even your affirmations have to act, come from a place of you deserving it or, you know, not like a bitch. Like, can I have this please, Mr. Universe? It's got to be like, no. So just, you know, simple little throwaway line that is like, tweaked into my world outlook somehow mm. yeah i don't fuck with aff affirmations um i feel like affirmations are some some shit for women they <laughs> deal with, you know they deal with insecurity so they got to keep telling themselves certain things so that they don't fall into the depression um I, I believe in visualization i just visualize myself as i want to be and, and live in that moment inside of my head. And, and that fulfills me, you know, writing down, oh, I am this and I am that and repeating it to yourself. I kind of feel like I'm, uh, you know, trying to rehabilitate myself from a psych ward when I do shit like that. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, that's where some, most of us are at. Well, some people don't. Some people, <laughs> yeah, some people have a hard time visualizing. I, yeah. I have a hard time visualizing. Sometimes. 21st century culture could be yeah. con 
could be, yeah. you know, compared to a psych ward in a lot of, a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah. 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 What, so can you, so it's that visualization process for you. Is that just kind of picturing yourself in your head of already written the book, say, or. Uh, no, more or less about the result after I've, the book is out. The feeling, or, the emotional feeling. Yeah, well, you know, like with the book, I didn't do any visualizations for the book, right? Like I do, for me, my visualization is more or less about what it was, what does my lifestyle look like after everything is all said and done? You see, you know, how, it, how you get to where you want to get usually isn't how you plan it. You know, you might plan something in the universe and God got a whole nother plan for you. So I don't worry about how I get uh, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I just worry about what it looks like when I get there and let the universe figure out the in-betweens for me. <laughs> yeah. You know? So would that be like picturing your house, your car, your neighborhood, that you're picturing where you're going to be and then everything else just sort of fills in the blank? Because that's interesting because Napoleon always says uh-huh. you got to like also visualize what you're going to give. Yeah, yeah, you know, all those elements are are valid. It, it's not even so much about the visualization as much as it is about the feeling because the the universe is uh is vibratory. Uh so uh it's not really going to understand pictures. It's not going to understand language, but it's going to understand how you feel yeah. when you visualize something. So, I could visualize myself you know, in a Ferrari, if I don't feel the emotion of being in that Ferrari, the visualization isn't really going to take hold as if, you know, I felt in my heart, you know, uh, what it felt like to be sitting in that Ferrari or whatever it is, right? Um, You have to feel the uh, rush of the wind against your skin and the goosebumps that come along with that. Those are the vibrations that the universe is going to respond to. You know, sometimes you get like uh, butterflies in your stomach, you know, so uh, or, you know, some sort of uh, emotion that you can feel in your body when you get mad, you get hot. Um, but, you know, your body feels uh, your frequency changes based upon how you feel. So when you when I when I measure, when I visualize, I don't really try to. I'm not so much concerned about the visualization as much as I am about the feeling. Yeah, I feel I, I, I change how I feel. And, and and it makes me, it puts me in alignment to where I need to be at. At a pretty big picture level, right? You're, it's a feeling at, at, at a big picture level, not of like after an event or after an accomplishment like the book. It's like, this is how I'm going to feel in like 10, 20 years or something like that. Or, right. Yeah. 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 yeah but, very much so high level. How yeah. often do you Probably boils do down to being grateful. Oh, yeah, you definitely. Yeah. Well, gratefulness and thankfulness is cool. How often do I do it? Uh, I don't know. Like, it's, it's a, you know, it's when, a ran- when, random thing whenever you f- feel like you need to or. I mean, when something becomes your lifestyle, you don't really track it. You know, yeah. it's like it's like saying, how often do you do your push ups? It's like, I don't know, every day, <laughs> you know, like, uh, you know, I, I kind of don't. I don't really track it. It's it's more like a reflex. Yeah. You know, when my when my when I feel off, it's just certain things I do to put myself back on. I don't think about, oh, oh I have to go and I just do it. It's just natural for me now because that's my lifestyle. Yeah. You know, I, I, I even do it when I feel up. If I'm feeling super happy, I adjust myself back down to an equilibrium. Like I talk about in my book, uh, Unbreakable Rules of Masculinity. I say the man, a source of man's power is equilibrium. Never be too happy, never be too sad. So I love to stay in that equilibrium space where uh, most of the shit doesn't phase me. It doesn't make me super happy and it doesn't make me super sad either. You know, I feel like, you know, to get happy after you accomplish something is kind of like uh, stupid in many ways because it's like either you expected it or you didn't, you know? So for me, after I accomplish something, people are like, oh, don't you think that's so great? And I'm like, yeah, but it's like I'm kind of like on to the next one already. You know, like people were saying like, oh, you're on Joe Rogan. That's so crazy. Like, how did you feel? And I'm like, I didn't even try to process feelings. I, I Like that didn't enter my mind and like try and process what this is. You know, I was more or less concerned with, um, damn, I didn't mean to say all the shit I said on here. <laughs> you know, like, I meant to be I meant to censor myself more, but I was so comfortable. <laughs> That I was like really a hundred percent me. 
Yeah, you sounded um, comfortable then, on there. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, a- afterwards I was happy, you know, what I did. But, um, you know, uh, there, you know, it, it's I, there was no like emotional thing that I had. I was just like I was on Rogan. Like I expect to be successful as opposed to being surprised when I'm successful. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That makes sense, yeah. man. That's like the Buddhist equanimity. Right. I mean, it's that it's that I think I feel like it's raising instead of these huge ups and downs, which I mean, there's suffering, of course, and there's happy times and, and you know, sad times. But instead of these huge swings, it's it's more of a sine wave that would be, you know, around the middle, around the middle. But the whole level of contentment, like the base raised. level of contentment is raised. So even yeah. when you're down, you're still your base Happier level. Than of con- you were most of the time. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way I think That's exactly it. it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really try to deal with emotions too much. Yeah. But that takes a while to get there, though. I mean, there's a lot of, I think, a lot of sort of meditating. It comes back to meditating on that as well. And, and just that, I think that brings some of that equanimity. Yeah, I mean, uh, my father was initiated, so I had a lot of the teachings when I was, a, you know, a child. Um, so, you know, I've been taught visualization since I was a child, right? Yeah. Um, so I was kind of initiated into this you know, through family, but um, uh, I, I was naturally, I was never the type of kid to... Uh, really let shit bother me, you know, maybe because my dad was so hard on me that like everything else in life seemed easy. Um, Cause my dad raised me like he was a military dad. Right. So like everything I did was wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, everything had to be corrected. You know, it was, he was always trying to sharpen me. You know, um, I was taught, you know, fork in your left hand, knife in your right hand. Uh, when your plate is done, you don't um, cross your, your knife and fork. You put them side by side, and that means your plate's done. If you're still eating, you cross your knife and fork. Don't put your elbows on the table. Don't lick your fingers. Don't eat with your hands. You know, like, I was raised, like, really, really strict like that. Um, so when I went out into the world, you know, I went to school, and I saw a lot of undisciplined people. I kind of looked at people funny, like, like, you know, it's just not really judgment, just like, oh, like this is different, you know? Yeah. But um, I, uh, you know, uh, I, I never really, like, I remember one time I was, uh, I was selling mortgages. This is when I was back when I was a mortgage broker. And uh, we had this guy who I thought was a waste of time, he used to qualify mortgages. Now, I used to qualify mortgages in my head. Like, I could do the calculations in my head and, and find a range on what the, uh, you know, how many points I was going to make on the front and back end based upon the rate sheet that day. And um, so I kind of had a ballpark figure on where my people would be. But we had to hand our paperwork into this guy and he'd go rate the stuff and he hand it back to me and it'd be exactly what I pitched already. But anyway, um, I remember one day I had a loan, it's probably worth about maybe five or six K to me and take home pay. And it blew up, you know, on like the day before closing or something like that. And uh, I remember the guy's name was Michael Bottles. And uh, he was like, yo, your loan blew up, this, that, and the third, something wrong with the appraisal. And I was just like, all right, I'll check it out. You know, and I just, I sat right there. I didn't even move. I just started looking through the thing and I called him up. I told him what the problem was. And uh, it didn't seem like the loan was going to go through and I was going to lose out on five or six K. And uh, Mike was like, yo, aren't you mad? Aren't you upset? (laughs) And I was like, nah, I'm not really like it's just money like i'm good like i got money saved up like i'm not it's like it's not like if i don't close this loan i'm gonna be on the street you know and um it kind of backfired on me because people assumed that uh i was stealing you know they were like well if he's not disturbed by losing this because usually when you lose that type of money people in the office would freak out like oh my god like you know this loan is worth so much i just didn't freak out like that so they thought that i was in uh, collusion with this guy and trying to, you know, because there's a lot of fraudulent stuff going on in the, in the mortgage industry, you know, people faking appraisals and all this type of stuff. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so I think they were, they thought that I knew the guy was handing over a fraudulent appraisal and I was in on it trying to get this thing to go through. 
when the truth of the matter is, is the guy wanted a mortgage and we linked up and I was trying to give him a mortgage and he handed me a Fugazi appraisal. Like, you know, but because I was so calm about it, they thought I was in on it, <laughs> you know? So sometimes being in control of your emotions, sometimes I have to pretend like I'm emotional just so people think I'm normal. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you that's know, a good point. I have yeah. to pretend like I'm happy. Yeah. So people think I'm normal. You yeah, know? that's interesting. So do you equate that to like um, a lack of emotion or shutting down of emotion or more of a stoicism where you let the emotion sort of creep in and just choose whether or not you're going to react to it? Uh, more, yeah, definitely more stoic. I, I don't know. I, you know, uh, I don't know. I just don't see the point, you know, like, I don't know. I mean, I just remember Kathy, I was, this is when I was working for 50 Cent. This is like 2012. And I remember speaking with Kathy. She said, this older lady, I always respected her. You know, she was one of the top dogs there. I was a marketing director, but she pulled me into all the top meetings, man. The meetings with Kanye West. She pulled me into all the top meetings, you know, and my, my associates hated it because here was, my associates are Harvard and Princeton graduates. Here's this kid with no college degree getting pulled into all the executive meetings because he's got this brilliant mind. And, you know, all the executives love me, you know. And I remember she pulled me in. She said, never get too high, never get too low. And that was like pretty much the only advice she really like gave me on a personal level. And, and, it, and, and, I, and I thought about it because I was kind of like already there. I just never put words with it mm. because I didn't know what I was feeling when I when I said to myself, you know, you know, don't be too high, don't be too low. I just lived that, you know. But there were times where I, you know, after she said that, I was like, yo, maybe I did get too happy at certain moments, you know, because sometimes, you know, it's like the classic case where the guy's jumping up and down and, you know, he's running around and he runs in the street, boom, he gets hit by a car. <laughs> right? yeah. It's like, calm the fuck down, <laughs> you know. So um, I don't know. I, I, I just look at, a, I, I look at it as emotion, you know, or happiness or sadness is something that, it's temporary any goddamn way. So like, why are you trying to hold on to it? Is that something you talk about in your, in your book as well? The unbreakable rules of masculinity? Yeah. Is that yeah, one yeah. of those rules? Yeah. In the chapter on equilibrium. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, my editor, uh, they said they, that was their favorite chapter was my chapter on, uh, equilibrium. Yeah. Yeah. What other, what can you give us a few more of the rules? What are like the top uh, three? Yeah. Um, don't save her. Uh, um, demonstration over explication. You know, um, don't argue with her. Um, those are like the top that on the top of my mind. Um, I even have this thing where uh, I don't fall in love with my work. So people ask me questions about my work. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I wrote, bro. Go read it and come yeah. back and ask me questions and, you know, remind yeah. me, yeah. you know. But um, after, I, after I write something, I kind of forget about it because I'm thinking about, like, the next thing I'm writing, you know. Um, so if somebody asks me, like, what's in your book? I'm like, I don't fucking know. Go buy this shit and read it. <laughs> you know, I don't fall in love with my work like that. You know, it was it was uh, just like I wrote my book on um, on marketing. It was... I wrote that book to get ideas out of my head because they were swirling in my head. And when ideas are swirling in my head, they bother me because I can't think about other stuff. So if I can get it out of my head and on paper, then I can think about new things and new ideas and new concepts. And the same thing happened with this masculinity book. It was just like, you know, there's just all these concepts and rules that, you know, I was trying to express on Twitter, but it just wasn't the right format. And, you know, there's a lot of explanation that has to go behind some of my theory. You know, like uh, women are the apex predator is uh, a popular chapter in my book. And, uh, you know, trying to explain that to people uh, in, a, in, a, in a world where they think patriarchy runs things. Right. So but, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff I embody. So I don't need to remember what I wrote because I embody what I wrote. I am what I wrote. You know, it's I think I think it's better when people go read my work and then come back and say this part right here. What did you mean? And then we can kind of dive into mm -hmm. it. But like when people ask me questions like, oh, tell me about your book. I'm like, go read it. <laughs> so what did you mean by women are the uh, apex predator of the planet? They're the apex predator. They, uh, that's exactly what it means. They, they right? choose right. us, not we choose them. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just poking <laughs> this along here. 
I'm not, I'm yeah, not, that's exactly not with you. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what it means. We think we're, we think we're hunting and we're not, we're being hunted. We're being trapped. <laughs> They're the trappers. You it's kind of like that. We're being willingly trapped. It's like that meme yeah. with the cats where you just put a box out and a cat will go sit in it. It's like, you just pick your pants I mean, think, off and a dude's going to show up. I mean, think about what you do when you go bear hunting or deer hunting, right? You got to put on camouflage. That's your dress. You know, you got to put on, um, uh, I forget what it's called, but, uh, the stuff they put on to mask the smell of their human body. Um, you know, you got to put that on. That's a woman's perfume. Uh, you know, you're doing all these things to disguise yourself so you can trap your prey. And that's pretty much what women do, man. They got push up bras and makeup and these dresses and they even lie and act like something that they're not in the honeymoon phase. I mean, we all kind of do, but, um, at the end of the day, man, they're, they're the ones that, uh, are the progenitors of society of the human race. So they're really ones, they're really the ones that pick and choose, uh, who's going to be the future of the human race. You know, who's, you know, who, what male is worthy enough to create the next generation. Um, men, men don't pick women, women pick men. So, What's the feeling of your book then and for who, like who, who was your book written for and, and what's the feeling like for guys that are having a problem with their masculine side or guys that just, this is like, you know, how to live in this world and not be a, not be a, a toxic male, but be uh, respected and be better. Yes, it's, it's, it's really for uh single men and men in relationships uh, to understand uh, how to deal with women to have yeah. better relationships with women. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, women are, women are fickle and inconsistent. So, which means that men have to be even more consistent than they usually are. So it, it, it's very stoic in, in that sense where we don't let the nature of woman disturb us and, and get us sidetracked and ignoring a lot of things women do and say, because, they're just being stupid women. Um, but more or less about it's, it's more or less about focusing on yourself, you know, making yourself a better man, because uh, once you lose sight of that, the women goes, you know, the, the women go. You have a woman that'll be with a man for 10 years. The minute he starts slipping on his, you know, on his exercise and start slipping on his money or his career, she's out. <laughs> she's out the door, you know. Whereas, you know, when she starts slipping and she starts getting fat, the guy is usually still hanging around, right? So, um, yeah, we had a good chat with Dr. Robert Glover and a lot of it was about neediness and how, you know, you can't seeking. become, become, yeah, approval seeking and neediness. That sounds yeah. very similar to that. Yeah. 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 Lack yeah. of assertiveness. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. My book touches on assertiveness too. Yeah. Um, and, and how to apply that to women um, because they don't like uh, guys that are, oh, can we like go out this weekend? Or it's like, nah, bro, you kind of <laughs> got to set that up yourself. <laughs> you got to tell it like, yo, I'm picking you up Friday night at eight. Don't be late. <laughs> so what's the next That's book going to be about? What's swirling in your head now? Uh, I wrote it. I wrote it a couple of years ago to book a hotel. I'm probably going to publish it in December, maybe early December. Um, I got to sit down and edit it or get it to my editor. I still got to give it a look over because I'm, I'm advanced um, beyond where I was at that point. So I'll probably add maybe a couple of chapters or two. Um, people want me to write a, a, a book on how to raise kids. So I'll probably uh, dive into that. Um, uh, and then... Um, I think the, we need like a, a political action book uh, or a cultural action book. So um, I've been tossing around a bunch of ideas on, you know, what to write uh, as far as um, America is concerned and where we're headed politically and culturally and, and what to do about that. Uh, so uh, as soon as I find a direction, I'll probably sit down and start writing that book. But I mostly, I mostly, uh, and spend my day working on some of my tech projects like Jiffy Ties, Coinbase app, um, 
you know, we sell a uh, Bitcoin BTC uh, and then Jifatize is the Twitter companion app. So um, I spend most of my time working on stuff like that. And then the, the tech projects that we have coming in the future um, that are uh, being built right now. Um, but that's where most of my stuff goes. Writing is more or less like a uh, an outlet for me because I have so many thoughts that just don't fit in a Twitter format. And it's just writing a book just gives me a way to flush out all my ideas. Uh, I forget what I read, but it always said that, um, you know, you can express, you can go into town square and you can express all these thoughts and everybody's going to think you crazy until you actually sit down and write a book which uh, supports all of your, you know, your thoughts in, 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 in a long format. And then people uh, tend to receive them a lot better. Mm. So, you know, that's what I try to focus on is anytime I'm headed down a certain path is making sure I write the long form version so I can never be um, misconstrued. Yeah, that's uh, that's good. What about yeah. uh, with all the, all the changes in big tech censorship and, and technology itself and the blockchain? I mean, is there any, is there any, I, I heard you talking before and we've talked about it here, like we're going to start hosting some of our own stuff, but I feel like there's going to be a need for some kind of uh, blockchain interface for people to host their own, uh, you know, po- podcasts or videos or something that will be able to be uh, non-centralized and take us out of that system, you know? Yeah, I don't, I don't know why blockchain has to be the technology for that. I, I still don't get that. Um Maybe it's good. Maybe it's something know. else. Yeah, I don't know. Something. I something. Mean, I just, I just don't understand what's wrong with the TCP/IP protocol. Yeah. Why, why not just use the uh, internet yeah. the way it is now? Like, there's really no difference, right? Like, I host uh, blockchain uh, debates every Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern time on my channel. Oh yeah. And I know the argument better than most people. I'm not saying I know the technology better than most right. people because I don't. I know the argument better right. than most people. And the truth of the matter is, um, it's not much different. <laughs> it's not much different than anything else that's happening out here in any other, in the other technologies. It's not like putting a, a social network on a blockchain is going to make it decentralized. That's just not true. Um, if I open up a company right now and call it Hotep Blockchain and, uh, you know, I, I decide to start um, hosting content on there. You know, I can choose who can get who can get access to that and who can't, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So just because the blockchain exists doesn't mean it doesn't mean it's not decentralized. Yeah. yeah. But in fact, I'll be talking about Bitcoin next week with uh, Vin Armani and people are going to be really upset when they find out my opinion on Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't have any Bitcoin, so I'm behind the times. Yeah, I know. A lot of people say that. <laughs> well, you had some once. I had some, but I lost, lost it. it. Literally lost I, it. I gave it away to the wrong person. I mean, it's probably worth a few thousand now. I just try not to think about it. Yeah, don't think about it. That's <laughs> not to think about it. I'm still there greenbacks. Grimerica.ca slash support. Just send your cash. What about, what about advice for people then to get out of the system and not ne- necessarily focus on, you know, blockchain kind of thing, but create create your own infrastructure like just get get out of the the whole system and do that on your own type thing you have any advice for people well Well, like because like you youtube uh you know the regular channels of censorship that kind of stuff yeah facebook you know i don't know i don't know i mean this is unprecedented right this is like (laughs) fahrenheit yeah 451, yeah. you know, we're, we're dealing with the book burning. Like, what do you do when they're burning the books in the town center? <laughs> like, what do you do? It's, it's, you, you really have two options, right? You arm up or you do nothing. You just take it. Like, or those are literally out. your options. There's What's three that? Three options. Or you help out. Or you help out, right. You help the censors. You yeah. help YouTube. You yeah. grab a pile yeah. of books and start burning them. Yeah, exactly. You know, like I mean, that's what I see a lot of now, right? We're just dogpiling on everyone else. Yeah, I mean, let's look at the conservatives. They complained about being deplatformed from social media, and as soon as Nick Fuentes sent the Grapers to uh, the TPUSA event to ask uh, Charlie Kirk some really tough questions, they asked for the deplatforming of Nick Fuentes. It's like complete contradiction of what they said they were about. 
So, I mean, you're either, you know, burning books or you're not. Right? But, you know, I, when I look around, I just see everybody's burning books uh, at some point in their life. Um, but, you know, what I think the solution to this is uh, would be uh, uh, quite radical. And I think uh, Andrew Jackson would be proud of me if he knew what I thought. What is that? What would Andrew Jackson do? You familiar with his history? No. I'm oh, uh, man. I'm man, a one time somebody somebody I'm came into Canadian. a bar. Somebody some one time somebody came into a bar uh talking shit to uh Andrew Jackson and he pissed the whip the shit out of him. You know? Um so yeah, is he the, is he the guy that's had the duels? Before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He like, oh, you president? got a problem? Let's go outside. Yeah, let's go yeah. outside and let's go outside and duel. Let's go outside and duel. I'll shoot your ass. You know what I mean? If you shoot me, it's fine. But like, you know, I think that's where we are in America right now, where uh, white people are scared to duel, and it's time to duel. Yeah. It's high time to duel. Yeah. Actually, I think white people in Arizona already. Um, you know, there's militia training out there, but. Um, if we don't, if we don't, if we don't start something, we're going to lose everything. Yeah, that's kind of, hmm. we're probably going to end up losing it. Um, we don't even have uh, any fucking guns, bro. Well, what's going to happen is uh, we're going to lose in the short term, but we're going to win in the long term. Uh, it's going to take uh, extreme um population decreases uh once the uh population decreases uh and we decrease to a minority uh or you know, lower numbers than we are now we'll have uh it'll be easier to unify and then you'll have a, a topple of uh of, of the of the structure and somebody new will come into power i mean you know not dynasties usually don't last too long this dynasty that's in power now uh you know is uh only been around for a few hundred years. Uh, I'd probably say since the 1800s, since the Bolsheviks won the Russian Revolution. Um, but, uh, you know, um, they don't have, they, they, uh, they're struggling to keep a stronghold on the people, which is why they have to do the YouTube censorship, right? Which is why I'm so optimistic. You know, a lot of people, they see the YouTube censorship and the Facebook stuff. And I'm like, Haha, this is good. It means people are actually like, uh, you know. Freaking there's, there's, the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. People are actually paying attention. There's there's still some people in this world that are, that are quote unquote woke. You know, I still think there's too many people asleep and, and participating in the politics game. But the fact that YouTube wants to come down and start censoring people lets me know that the uh, establishment is really fucking scared. The fact that we got Grapers challenging Charlie Kirk lets lets us know that uh you know when Charlie Kirk has to cancel Q and A's lets us know the establishment is fucking scared. Yeah. So uh you know short term I'm bearish, long term I'm bullish. Yeah. I mean for the for the for the thing to reset, I mean it's only going to take one natural disaster like a huge uh, toba or volcano or or a mass ejection from the sun or like a Carrington event. I mean. Us in the West are, are fucked if that happens. I mean, it, it's going to be a reset if some sort of mass disruption like to electronics happens. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I was talking more or less uh, human intervention. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, I yeah. Mean, we're, but we're close to either either of those, you know. Close to? Well, but do you got inside well, information? It's only a matter of time, right? Only a matter of time. Yeah, I mean, it's <clears> inevitable. <throat> yeah. Murphy's Law. If you yeah. zoom out far enough. Yeah. It's already there. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, eventually, you know, some asteroid's going to hit this uh, rock, and but, that's going to be. But what well, it's, go, but could... to get the people to do it themselves, I mean, in Canada here, we don't, we just don't have the the uh, wherewithal, the anger. The, we just, we just go with everything. Like, there's just no uprising at all. I mean, our province is talking about separating, and I, you know, it, it sounds good and everything, but I don't think they'll. You know, no chance. There won't be enough of a uprising to make it happen. It'll just be. You ever watch the Hunger Games? Yeah, that's yeah. where we're headed. Yeah. So you know, um, what's the home, what's the girl's name? The main character chick? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Agnes, I think. I don't um, think it's Agnes. What, what's her name, man? Here, you oh, keep talking. I'll I find know, out yeah, the yeah, name. I, I know. Um, 
I'll find out. Yeah. It, it starts Jeez. with an A. Yeah, it's an interesting it. name, yeah. But um Aberdeen she, no, it's not Aberdeen, I don't think. She um she's almost like a subconscious Trojan horse because when she gets the spotlight, she sends out a signal and they gotta snatch her off the TV. Effie? Right? Who? No, no. No, nah, that's oh. not even on thing. Um but when the entertainers decide to stop participating, which I believe is inevitable, is when we'll see a, a change in tide. It's the it's up to the entertainment industry because it's the entertainment industry that's holding us back. It's the entertainment industry that uh, wholly it's, distracts us. And it's pushing the cultural narrative all the time as well. I mean, they're controlling that. I think. Yeah. Katniss. Yeah. Katniss. Yeah. Katniss. Katniss. There you go. Um, so yeah, you know, that, that, uh, you know, once the, for example, um, there was no solidarity amongst NFL players against the NFL, right? It was like maybe a handful, but if, you know, two, three teams decided we're not playing this Sunday, like that would have been huge, right? Yeah. Um, like we haven't had a real revolutionary in entertainment since Muhammad Ali. Like, that was the last real entertainment revolutionary. I mean, we had Sam Cooke, you know, da da da. But as far as people that were uh, dependent upon uh, the entertainment industry, we really haven't seen too many people really like step up and, and give real pushback to anything and, and decide to, uh, you know, say no, right? say no, like like black people are still taking roles that we should be saying no to. Yeah. Jordan Peele is still making movies that we should say no to, right? Um, it, it, you know, like Jordan Peele is, is, is playing this white versus black dichotomy when white and black aren't enemies, you know? So, and he gets paid and gets pushed by his producers to keep that racial stuff in the news. Mm-hmm. So until yeah. entertainers decide low we're not dealing with that form of entertainment anymore you know let's deal with something different something more culturally impactful uh impactful uh you won't see change but i think eventually you know we'll see entertainers uh step up and 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 say no we're not going to play how how much of the entertainment industry do you think is left after mockingbird um you mean operation mockingbird yeah is that the one where they yeah, took well, over the press? Are you talking entertain? Well, that's the press, yeah. Yeah, well, I I think Mockingbird goes deeper than I just mean, the it's press. All, it's I all connected, it's yeah. The no. movie industry and everything. I mean, Clooney's clearly a spy. Are you? Oh, D- George Clooney? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's also connected. I don't know how they would ever. How they would ever you know leave their bread and butter behind and and well i mean that's what i mean it's like just those five companies that are making the movies making the news making the tv shows making the newspapers making it all it's five fucking companies making it all yeah Yeah. well it might be four now that fox bought fucking or disney bought fox so now disney owns fox and vice and even vice you know the renegade news is owned by viacom and he's a fucking billionaire yeah yeah yeah, but it's all these companies need people. You what know, about Rogan? Yeah. You went to Rogan. Did he seem like he was CIA? <laughs> Did he seem like he was CIA? I didn't get those vibes. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know I, I mean, maybe he is. I didn't get those vibes. I just, I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't, th- I wasn't in that mindset to be looking for stuff like that when I went to Joe Rogan's. I just went to go do my interview and bounce. Um, maybe he is, maybe he's not. Because I've heard a lot of pushback of people saying shit about, you know, Rogan and he's gotten soft and he works the establishment. And um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like those arguments are kind of weak because I can create an alibi for him that's really simple. You know, the fact of the matter is, is that they're doing book burnings on YouTube and there's some things you can't talk about. So he might want to dance around topics for the sake of his own brand for the sake of longevity for the sake of his pockets which he's not wrong for you know like why why should he be the guy that dies in the hill everyone else you know 
Like there's like it, it takes an effort from everybody. Everybody needs to be speaking up. You know, we can't just say because he's got you know the largest platform out here, he's got to die for our sins. It's like nah, like you, you got a responsibility too. <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, I think I think everybody's got to join together. You think it could come from the sports world as opposed to Hollywood type type thing? I think I think I think it has to come from the sports world. Uh, TV uh, revolves around sports. Um, you know, if you look at uh, TV viewership is run by the NFL, um, all the uh, shows for the week, all the news broadcasts for the week um, are advertised during uh, NFL on Sunday. Huh. Uh, so it goes the NFL and then the next uh, biggest viewership is the news and the news drives all the uh, advertising, the products and TV shows and et cetera. Um, but uh, NFL, you know, runs the world uh, or runs America. So, um, you know, if if the if the football players aren't going to be taking up a role uh, to divest, um, I don't think uh, much change will come. But I think eventually somebody's going to be that change, that spark, and get somebody to just boycott a game for a Sunday. I mean, literally, if 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 uh, if if people if black people stop playing football, this whole country will shut down. Like just for one Sunday, this whole country will shut down. It'd be upside down. Yeah, that's interesting. I it's an interesting perspective. I've I haven't been into this pro sports so much. I'm totally out of the loop on how influenced. Uh, well, I think the whole country is, is and, blowing up right now because of Don Cherry. Said you people. Yeah, yeah. That's, so uh, there that's you go. It, that, that's it. I don't know if you heard about that. Our, our sportscaster. Uh, in the NHL, you know, the hockey. That's our NFL in Canada. He's been doing this. this it's a hockey color. night in Canada, He's, yeah. It, so your Sunday is Saturday in Canada, and it's hockey. And it's mm, hockey yeah. night in Canada, and it's been going on. But he's been doing this for 40 years. Mm. Longer? I, no, no, 38 or 40 I'm or something. I'm 38. So. Yeah, it's it's been going on for 40 years, and... Yeah, he's a huge showboat. Oh, yeah, this guy is <laughs> over the top in every, every way. But anyway, he, he was, he's bitching because nobody wears poppies anymore. Nobody so, wears what? Poppies. There's a red a red poppy for Remembrance Day to remember the war veterans, uh, the the uh, you know the how we yeah uh, yeah. So he went out and said, "You people come to Canada and you don't wear a poppy," and that's it. Fired. After. Fired. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. Totally. He said that yeah. every year, probably yeah, for the I last like forty I years. But. But. I, I watched the actually little thing. I mean, I've never been a Don Cherry fan. I've never been a Don Cherry fan. So. I didn't want to mm. see him get fired at 85. But I did feel like he had a lot of support. People were like, you know. There's people protesting and stuff. Yeah. But they're still going to watch hockey, though. Yeah. Oh, exactly, yeah. 100%. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. so you're not really protesting. No. Well, I don't. Mm. I don't that's, the, that's the problem. We you don't know, watch hockey. Do we don't watch hockey. Just so. <laughs> well, I mean, just so you know. Protesting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch any any pro sports. Or Hollywood. I'm, al I'm almost to the point where I can't watch Hollywood, I'm too. fucking I mean, back I'm, on. I've been renting movies on YouTube. I feel like YouTube is slowly turning into a movie rental platform. <laughs> so I've been renting movies. I'm, ugh, I can't help it. The kids want to watch the movies that aren't on Netflix. I feel like YouTube and Netflix are in cahoots. Yeah, maybe. You ever watch uh, that movie Equilibrium? No. No, I don't think so. Um, so in the movie Equilibrium, uh, people are given a, uh, a substance uh, to inject in their body that removes their emotions. Oh. And uh, throughout the day, there's this uh, audio visual recording that plays all day and they call this white dude father. And uh, he's basically brainwashing people all day through the TV. And it's, it's, it's how I look at sports where uh, we've never had a disruption of the NFL. Um, and I feel like the, the moment we have uh, an unscheduled uh, disruption of the NFL will be kind of like when fathers stop speaking and people come out of that spell. Yeah. Um, because you, you ever notice that when the NFL isn't in, uh, isn't in season, people are more glued in the social topics. And as soon as the NFL season, like I used to make this joke, I said, yo, y'all got like four more weeks to, to kick off this revolution because football comes back. <laughs> wow. Really? Hey, it's that powerful down there. Yeah. 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 Huh. Like like the other day I was tweeting, I was tweeting on a Saturday and some dude goes, Bro, the football's on. And it's like college football every Saturday. 
And I'm just like, dude, I wasn't even thinking about that. Like, I forgot you guys watch football on the weekends. But I don't watch TV, so I can't relate. Yeah, exactly. No, no that's the problem is we're out of touch now. So, so, so here's the thing. So why don't we get a crowdfund going and we'll buy all the Super Bowl commercials? We'll have a Hotep commercial, a Grimerica commercial. <laughs> well, who else can we get in there? Everyone. We'll get everyone well, who's got a... The thing is that they'll never allow that. Yeah, happen. they're like, fuck you guys. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I've 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 uh, bought uh, you know advertising before, and uh, there's too much of a discussion involved to be able be able to do that. You know they'll they'll turn your money down. And they have no problem if it's not the right message. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. What about the hip hop community? Okay, I mean, so you're gonna have to run out on the football field then with a message. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about the hip hop community? Is there any anything similar you would hope for from that or? Or does no. it have the same? Doesn't have the same influence. No, nah, uh, hip hop doesn't really have the influence people think it does. Uh, um, not anymore. Did it used to? It never really did. You no, know? nah, I mean, not like the NFL. Yeah. You know, like like nobody tunes in. For example, if I pulled. Uh, Uh, you know, Giants fans and Eagles fans into the room. Like, it gets really tribal, you know? Like, it's real passion. People say, oh, this is my team. They feel like they're actually invested in these teams. Yeah. Whereas hip-hop, people aren't that invested into an artist. Oh, where, that's a good point. And, yeah. you know, an artist is here today. Yeah. And if you don't hear it from them next year, you just kind of forget about right, them, right? Right, right. So, you know, and there's so much abundance of music where, you know, it's kind of like... You could do uh, where are they now all day long, and we can play you know number one Billboard artists all day long, and be like, oh, I remember that guy, and like, where is he now? He's working at KFC, right? Right. Um, now that's not to say hip hop has no influence. I think it does, um, but um, hip hop's in a, in a very good place uh, right now. Um, I think the uh, the people putting out music right now put out great music. The message is uh, getting better. Um, Kanye just released that gospel album, that gospel style album. Uh, we still got Kendrick Lamar out here. We got J. Cole out here. We got uh, Black, uh, uh, Rhapsody. Um, Hip hop's in, in really good hands. You know, some of the top artists still have great messages. Um, the problem is. Uh, people are so distracted by other things that some of these messages you know won't get through or right. aren't allowed to get through because of uh you know classism you know um j cole you're not going to see him wearing a flashy louis vuitton and all of that stuff you know he just looks like a regular you know bummy dude uh he doesn't believe in you know all that flashy style stuff so people will, will dismiss him but that's because um, they've been sold this idea of, you know, designer, everything. So when people say stuff like that, like, you know, hip hop's influential, I'm like, nah, these designers are a lot more influential than hip hop. <laughs> you know, hip hop is just selling these things. But, uh, you know, people, it, it's not even, it's not even a hard sell. Everybody wants nice shit, you know? Um, but, you know, I, I would put it, I would definitely put it on, TV, movies, uh, sports, and then maybe music. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So it's just cancel your cable. Throw the TV yeah, out the window? The, yeah, I mean, you got to cancel. I mean, think about it like this, right? Music is very much an option. TV is not. Um, you know, whatever channel you turn it on, you ain't get some bullshit. You know, even you turn on the History Channel, you're gonna get some bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Discovery, yeah, more bullshit. Yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get half the truth. Um, whereas music, you know, I can open up my title app and pick Michael Jackson or Coltrane or Miles Davis. I get that option. Uh, with the news, there really aren't options. You know, you got CNN, Fox, NBC. And that's your options. You know, um, and people kind of look at them as being. Uh, the authority on on what is news and what people don't realize is uh, what these outlets are saying 
the accuracy of it all actually doesn't matter, right? If they talk about, hey, this is the Iraq war, this is what's happening in Iran, the accuracy of the report actually doesn't matter at all. What matters is the fact that they decide to call what's happening in Iran news. What they choose to call news is where the problem comes in. Yeah. So when you wake up in the morning and you check your feed and you see what's in that news cycle, they're basically controlling your life based upon this news cycle. You're not choosing what the news cycle is. It's given to you. So, you know, whereas music, you kind of have that option. They can give you, they can force you Cardi B, but you still have the option to go to, you know, um, Rhapsody and these other and these other artists. You have an um, iPhone? Yeah. Have you been able to get rid of that fucking U2 album? That what? There's that U2 album on there. I can't get rid of it. I've deleted it 50 times. It just keeps coming back. What's it called? U- U2. U2. U2? U2. Bono? Bono. Uh, I don't know what that is. I'm. So, you're so lucky. <laughs> it was a. It was this weird deal where it came with the phone. So, um, Darren's always bitched about not being able to get rid of it. Like it was forced down his throat, basically. It just showed up there one time, and now I've actually deleted it a couple times. And it keeps coming. I'm back. driving down the road, and fucking YouTube. Meanwhile, comes up. I can't get the music back that I want on well, my it's phone. Definitely. That's how bad it is. Yeah, I don't know. Well, and the movies are interesting, too, because as the movies and the TV shows become a little bit too woke for people, it's backfiring on them. And they, I don't think they can keep uh, now you're sustaining using woke themselves. in the opposite direction. Yeah. What, what, yeah. What's they been, took over what's it. Been entertainment that's woke? I haven't seen anything. No, so woke. he's using opposite of woke. So he's <clears> using, like, I don't know. What what's they the call what they, what they What oh. they say. Cause they, they took that term away from the real red pill, and now it's, it's oh, yeah, it's yeah. Been, you know. Just like yeah, conspiracy theory, that. they take these terms away and and change them, change the meaning. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, it's not sustainable. I don't think they'll keep losing money on stuff. Uh, you know what though? Dora tripped out on a mushroom, so that was kind of cool. Oh my god! Or was it Dora? Or okay. someone in the Dora movie ate a mushroom? I thought I I I laughed. <laughs> I think the world uh, could use more psychedelics. Uh, yeah. No, I couldn't. I couldn't say. Oh, if you ever come to Canada, look me up. <laughs> I don't think I have a desire to. 20, min- 20 minutes. In and out. Yeah, stay away from them. <laughs> we need some of us to stay away from them, too. We need some I'll be with you over there. Yeah. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't met anybody who's done them that can prove to me that it's beneficial. <laughs> you know? Because everybody tells me the same thing. They're like, oh, my God, I went into this area, and then it was just like I knew everything, and everything was enlightening. And I can't subscribe it. And I'm like, all right, so when you came back, what did you retain? Well, nothing really. So I'm like, the fuck? You just wasted your time. Like, like, like Darren, a word, but I can't remember it. I can't, my, I can't my, remember the my word. Eagle, my ego, I met this dude, he told me a word, but I can't remember it. I can't remember Yeah, it. like that's what everybody says. And I'm like. But I keep so you, a lot of the other stuff with me, like any of the life review stuff or stuff like that. I mean, yeah. You, you had a pretty profound trip recently. That, yeah. Uh, yeah, and some of the stuff with the mushrooms is crazy. I mean, for treating anxiety and depression and stuff like that. But you have to go in it with that. In a therapeutic setting. In a yeah, therapeutic. Is, like, yeah. you start it with yeah. saying, like, okay, I'm going in to fucking deal with my yeah. anxiety over Graham being an asshole. And then yeah. I eat my mushrooms, and I'm like, okay, Graham's not an asshole. It's okay. And then, <laughs> yeah, you know, so here we are. Go, getting along. Yeah, that would go... That would go against my philosophy. You know, my philosophy is we don't seek happiness in external things. We seek uh, happiness internally. So we go within instead of going without. Um, so, I, you know, if I was dealing with anxiety, I have certain things that I do. And I don't need. Uh, all I need is a couple of candles and we good, you know, nice. <laughs> just to just to set the mood. Um, but, you know, like even like when people say they like, have these all these epiphanies or whatnot. I'm like, I get epiphanies all day. Like, I don't need some, you know, I could smoke weed and get an epiphany. I don't really need the mushroom trip. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong. Maybe in a couple of years I do it and I come back on the show. I'm like, dude, yeah, I'll, fuck. Fuck shit ever. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll send you the link to the episode I ate mushrooms on. You can see if that, uh, how that sits with you. But I mean, cannabis is the same idea. I mean, I, I, I especially when the, when I, when you start dabbling into the edibles, I mean, you eat enough fucking edibles and you're borderline on some, you so might as well have eaten a couple yeah. of mushrooms. Yeah, you just, you don't hallucinate though. No, no, you don't. But even on the mushrooms, you don't hallucinate a whole ton. 
Okay. Any level of hallucination I thought I had on mushrooms is fucking gone. It's not okay. like there's Can like be- no with mushrooms. It's more of the ways and the feelings and the, the ability to maybe look at yourself in a different light. Whereas with the DMT, it's more like a complete fucking saw life review. I, I equate it to a near death experience. Whereas like uh, last time I thought I had my, sh- I thought I had some shit worked out and it was pretty fucking humbling of like, listen, uh-huh. bro, you got some fucking work to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I think just cause where I'm at in my life, I'm just so content with my progress and my success. It's just like, I don't want to fuck, why with, fuck with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. You might just come out batshit crazy. I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. then I'd feel terrible. <laughs> I would be like, yeah. you fucking ruined Hotep. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I'm I'm in a good place. Yeah, well, I, I suppose uh, the at is at Hotep Jesus on Twitter. Yeah, Hotep is, Jesus on Twitter. Is that the only place you hang out on the social? Are you on Facebook or anything like that? No, nope, just Twitter. Discord. If you ever get sick of Twitter, head over to grimerica.ca slash chats. We'd love to have you. We'll give you a special <laughs> title, Hotep. You'll be the only Hotep in the whole chat room. <laughs> yeah, nice. my word. But uh, we appreciate you filling our blank spot here. Your intuition worked out perfectly with our cancellation, so we are able to get you in next day. I mean, that doesn't happen very often. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. That's why I don't need the mushrooms. <laughs> this is it. This yeah, is it. Exactly. You are the mushroom. He's there. He's already there. <laughs> thanks yeah, for having right me. Yeah, I hope you had a good time, man. Come back anytime. Yeah. yeah. All right, definitely. Okay. I appreciate it. Okay, take care. Bye. Yeah, and that was our chat. That with was Hotep a Jesus. chat with Hotep Jesus. What'd you think, buddy? Yeah, it was, it was fun. It was that good. was a fun one, eh? Yeah. I was a little shocked that we got into the political stuff so quickly right off the bat. You're like, you know, you get into the fascism right off the bat. But uh, once I realized his equilibrium is always there, then that's okay. I yeah, didn't want to right. start out too heavy, but it was good. Yeah. Too heavy? No, I didn't want to be start out too heavy, that's you know, right. but it was good. It was a great chat. 90 minutes flew by. Yeah, that did the fly chats by were there. popping. Yep. Yeah. Uh, everyone seemed to, uh, oh, we got, man, I wish I had the pleasure of not knowing who you two was. This is it. You two. <laughs> yeah. Right? Can you yeah, imagine? I love it. Never yeah. having met you two. Yeah. Oh, what a world. That's great. What was that? No, I'm song? thinking about, I'm thinking about reading that book. I think I it would be a good book. Yeah. Oh, what I'm looking forward to. Is that you two? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's you two. Yeah. What book you read? No, this uh, the Hotep one. Oh, uh, the masculinity one? Yeah. yeah. I'd have to peek into that, yeah. too, I think. Yeah. I didn't know it existed until like I looked on Audible right away because I thought maybe I can on Audible? Cram, cram it down right, right off the bat. Ooh, we should start that company. I wonder if yeah. that URL's taken. Someone get Audible, audiobull.com. Yeah. It'll be our new audiobook production company. There you go. Audible. Awesome. Audible. All right. Big thanks to uh, Hotep for coming on the show. Check out his Twitter. Check out his books. Big thanks to you guys for listening. The show wouldn't be much fun if nobody listened. At least there's a couple dozen out of, of you out there listening, and we love you for it. Uh, there's even a few of you that choose to support us, grammarica.ca slash support. We need some support because we love you, and you love us, and you love the show. You love the value that the show provides you every week. Fill in a couple hours of your time without this fake news, and, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're giving you the antidote to the world and it's messed up ways that cancel your cable, cancel all your other shit, support your independent content creators. Start with Grimerica, grimerica.ca slash support. Do all the other stuff in the show notes too. You can review the show, rate the show. Uh, let's all review the show this week. Let's I'd like to, on Monday morning, we'll wake up to 20,000 new reviews. How about that? Grimerica.ca slash iTunes. Get you over there. Uh, anything else? Send Graham an email. Graham at Spam Graham. Com. Graham at grammarica.com. Synchronicities. And I got a great one to read for on an upcoming intro. It's going to yeah. be fantastic. Excellent. Other than that, hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Thanks for listening. And we will see you next week. Five pink flamingos and a few flamenco dancers. They're in the kitchen And they're baking Day of the dead cookies And I step into the kitchen And I'm like, let me have a looky See what kind of cookie you're cooking up 
And they're looking up at me skeptical And I point decks to my spectacles And I'm wearing a maroon Harvard t-shirt Yeah, I know I'm a smart cookie, but I'm no psychic You can come and ring my bell But where we're gonna end up in the future, I can never tell I can never tell Five of my best friends And a few of my enemies We're at the coffee shop And we're settling our differences Benjamin Otto Pulls out a game of Chinese checkers And he orders a cappuccino And I pick blue and he picks red And you pick yellow and now I'm wearing a tie-dye peace sign t-shirt Yeah, I know I'm a peace nick, but I ain't no hypocrite You can come and ring my bell But where we're gonna end up in the future, I can never tell I can never tell sense of smell I can smell the salt in your tears and I can sense your fears you're hoping for a bit of divinity in this worldly vicinity and you understand the fragility of the human vessel and you sit Indian style like a pretzel and you levitate to a transcendental state when you meditate and you levitate to a transcendental state when you meditate. And you levitate to a transcendental state when you meditate. And